All right, everybody, it's the Repo Show. Today, my special guest here, Cliff Focus, comic, podcaster, rapper. How are you doing? Glad I was able to get you on here today. What's good, my brother? What's good, bro? <clears throat> While you were doing that intro, have you ever like had one of those coughs that like almost make your head explode and like your eyes come out your fucking head? You know those like the murderous coughs? You ever had one of those? Yeah, I get those, yeah. Oh man, bro. On the intro, you're gonna see me on the side poking out the side of the fucking the intro. Like, eh, eh. <laughs> That'll be all right. Was good though. Just chilling. So yeah, we crossed paths on Instagram like a while ago. And then uh we found you again on there. You started this new podcast, uh Original Wiggas podcast. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you're a, a no shame self-proclaimed wigga, eh? Yeah, a, a little bit of that. And also just the, you know, I'm we're reclaiming the word, you know what I mean? You know? Yeah. Okay. And he said, "No hard, no er." Yeah. No. There's no. We don't. We do no wiggers. It's wiggas with a hard z. Mm. A hard z. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, so, how long you been doing uh, comedy and rapping, just entertaining, I guess, in general? Oh man. I mean, like, like we were talking a little bit before we went on, like uh, rapping, hip hop. That's baby number one. You know what I mean? Like I've been writing yeah. rhymes since I'm twelve. Uh, performing at parties since I'm like. 15 16 in studios you know since like the late 90s you know nice. comedy comedy's always been sprinkled in you know i've done some like sketch stuff with people over the years and like hosted shows and like you know done a minute or two of comedy while keeping the show going and this and nice. that now when i can get back on stage finally whenever all this nonsense is over you know what i mean you know not nonsense it's real but you know at the same time we yeah all, we all know what it's doing to us you know what i mean I'm going to be putting more focus on stage time, like for full sets of comedy at that point, you know, well, once that opportunity is there again, you know, hip hop, I'll always do it, but I'd say comedy, I've dove into it extra hard, probably like the past five, six years now, like, you know, where I'm like, okay, this is also something I really, really want to do, you know? Yeah. Did it start as a hobby and you just gradually took it more serious as it went? I guess to a degree. I don't know. I don't know if I would, I'd say like, all right, I did it just to fuck around a little bit, right? Like the Wally, you know Wally, the character I do, right? Uh, I don't know it, no. You don't know Wally, bro? No, no. Man. I caught these two episodes of the podcast, and that was pretty much I skimmed oh, through some stuff. Okay, I got, I got to, you, you got to meet Wally. Wally is a crazy friend of mine, you know, super conservative, very white, may, mayonnaise uh, advocate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Big time Trump. Yeah, okay. Guy. You know what I mean? All, all, all that good stuff. So, like, I put up a video messing around as him, you know, I'm white and I'm angry and all this. And that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, around, like, the Trump, sh you know, the Trump times when everybody was really on Trump's neck. And uh, and I had an idea for a couple other characters. So, so the comedy as a main focus started more from character-driven skits. You know what I mean? You know, and I probably have more, I say I probably have more comic experience or improv experience than actual, like, I'm a stand-up comedian doing comedy. You know what I mean? Like I didn't, I haven't done a ton of that where that's a direct, you know, uh, directive. You, you, know, yeah. you know what I mean? But uh, but I don't know, bro. I'm I'm kind of like I've always wanted to entertain for for a living, right? Forget and getting rich, forget getting famous and all that nonsense. I just want to be able to provide for my family at some point off only entertainment. You know? Yeah, I mean? that would be nice. You know, I've made money here and there, so I'd be lying if I didn't say. Anything I do entertainment wise doesn't have like a purpose of trying to, you know, make it go somewhere, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I guess with the rapping there, what's like the biggest uh, crowd you've performed for? The biggest crowd. All right. Where I was an actual on the, the ticket, like focus is performing. Probably not too big, you know, 500, a thousand, maybe. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big crowd to me anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know what? With, with hip hop, it's like I, I gotta see how I feel when I go on stage, like with the directive being a comic. You know what I mean? Because with hip hop, it's like what, what, once I hit the stage, it's like nothing exists except the music and 
entertaining the people there. I, it's probably different with comedy because it's more, you know, you have to really get them. You know what I mean? Like, like if, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, if, the, if it's not funny, it don't matter. Your stage presence don't matter. Nothing else matters. You know what I mean? You're getting, you're getting bombed. You know what I mean? But, um, well, performing music is there uh do you get hecklers just like you would in comedy like would people have you ever been booed off the stage or uh or bombed a set kind of thing i've never gotten booed off the stage you know what i mean because you know what is you know i i do lyrical hip-hop for the most part right the stuff i do is either conscious lyrical battle lyrical or street hop you know what i mean so the people who come to those type of shows they respect lyrics you know what i mean so you know as long as you you spit in your bars clear and all that good stuff but I did have one time that was notably terrible, and it was right around the time when when, when they started. You know how they started using like the CDs, but with the with the like they're kind of like a turntable, but a CD. Yeah, at yeah. The same time, so so my dude was running one of the shows off of that, and I I still to this day think there might have been a little bit of sabotage involved, you know, and some people around me think that might be the case too, but uh, but it skipped like three four times. Like right off the jump in my in my in my set, the, bro. This, the the first like two songs, horrendous. You know what I mean? Like like there wasn't like three four bars in a row where I was able to just, you know, <laughs> do the thing. But the last joint I did, it ran fine and and it was one that like I you know was real good live, uh, track. You know what I mean? So so that saved me. But, it made up for it, eh? Yeah. Otherwise, there probably would have been some booze on that one. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, like, cause the songs, the the two songs that fucked up, not only, like, did they fuck up, they weren't great songs. You know what I mean? Looking back, I'm like, yeah, those two were okay. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, they weren't as good as like, you know, a lot of the other stuff I was doing at the time. So, you know, they were experimental. You know yeah, I mean? you change as a person over time too, right? So something you wrote seven years ago, five years ago, you may not feel it nearly, you know, like you felt it when you read it the first time. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that, that's like you sure. grow out of some jokes. Yeah, yeah. And, and you especially with hip hop, too, with comedy as well. But with hip hop, too, like there's got to be progression. You know what I mean? Like if you if you if you were rapping 10 years ago and you're still rapping now and there's not a nice difference in either your flow or your rhyme schemes or your or, or breath control or your vocals or something, then you just shouldn't be rapping anymore. Like there has to be progress with rapping. Otherwise, why, why are you still spitting? You know what I mean? If you were better in 2005, you should have left it there. You, you know, you know what I mean? How do you feel about the uh, Kanye West, uh, whatever he did, that that big stadium bullshit that he did? Well, what the the recent joint? I guess so. After <laughs> like they're, they're burning the church and shit like that. Oh, I don't even know if I've seen that one yet. I don't. When know he had that. Marilyn Manson on the stage. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Well, I know they did something too. Where they had a video shoot. Where it was Marilyn Manson and uh, and uh, Da Baby. Yeah, they had a the, the stadium was packed, but I don't know yeah. who's buying these tickets and who's uh, still entertained by this guy. Because I'm not a fan of him at all myself. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> his first album was was a good album, like a legitimately good album. Uh, which one was College Dropout? Was that his first album? Yeah, it was really early two thousands, right? Yeah, that was, that was the one with like Through the Wire and Jesus Walks and. You know, through the wire actually might not have been on that. That was his old single when he first just got out of the car accident. But it might. But <clears throat> as far as production, there is no question he's one of the best producers ever to live. Yeah, I like his sam. I like the most of the music that he samples from. I almost like that the music better than what he puts together. But I'm everybody's you, different, right? I'm telling you, man. The dude, the dude's one of the reason why he's one of the best is because of all the funky stuff he does. Because if he wanted to. He could just say, listen, I'm only going to make DJ Premier sounding beats. And he could do that. You know what I mean? Like he's 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 nice enough as a producer, as a rapper. That that's another story. You know what I mean? Like he, he's had ghost writers. You know what I mean? Like, he, you know, so so right there, you're you're like eliminated from possible top five or goat contention as a rapper. If someone yeah. your songs. that's it. What do you feel? What do you feel about his uh, all the clothing line that he's putting out? His fucking funky shoes and funky shoes and all the weird shit that he wears. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's all weirdo shit. I, I mean, I, like he's a space alien as a human. You know what I mean? Like, like, and and that goes for both ways, right? That goes for intelligence as well as straight strangeness. You know what I mean, bro? He's like a super genius and a super weirdo. 
you know, <laughs> at the same time, which which is why I think it's like such a crazy, you know, usually you don't usually you don't see both. Like you don't see like a dude who's like a super genius and he was also like got a flair and he's weird. You know, it's usually one or the other. <laughs> yeah, one it's pretty heavy on one side. Yeah. yeah. He's he's he he's right there. And I mean, all that shit. I mean, I, I'm definitely not the only thing I'm a fan of him for mostly is his production. You know what I mean? Beat wise, they've got the guy, the guy's a genius. You know what I mean? And he could make any type of beat and you know, whatever. He could have just lived off that, but the, you know, I don't know. He's a weirdo. That's my overall feeling on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I'll agree. I agree yeah, with you for that's sure. The bottom line. <laughs> You know? So we're saying how hip hop's just completely changed everything, the fashion, everything, and uh, it's like that the uh, the conspiracy that they're pushing uh, just the, the PDs at radio stations, the the, the and then Fat Joe got shit for this award shows. The, this this is a fucking gay mafia, my man. Right? Like, you know what I'm saying? They are in power. So why wouldn't a guy come out and say, "Yo, I'm gay," and get that type of love? I mean, Lady Gaga, I don't know if she's gay, but she's running with that gay shit for real. And she is winning. <laughs> Rap music. Yeah, I'll never understand the clothes that these guys are wearing. And who's talking them into going out on stage and shit like that? The, 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 these dudes. These dudes have, listen, but here's, but here's my thinking on it, right? Like, I'm fully with you on, like, the weird and it's this and that and I'm not really down with it. But the gay mafia like i got i got a lot of dudes like that you know what i mean like you know like, black <laughs> people, like you know like spanish cats that i know that like they really believe like full wholeheartedly about the gay agenda you know and, yeah and, and, that, and like it's literally like it's a directive you know not that it just happens to be happening because woke culture is heavy and they're in more rooms and there's more pressure on businesses to be more inclusive that's just a natural progression of when woke culture has a grip on pocketbooks and pockets. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know, like, but yeah, Fat Joe's on that like the agenda. They were trying to make all of our children gay. Like, come on, all right, slow down, Joe. Slow down. Joe. The only way to get in that mafia, you gotta get sexed in. There's no burning, uh there's no burning cards or nothing. You gotta get sexed into that gang. Come on, bro. Get, give Big Pun's family some money and shut up with that shit. <laughs> you know? Cause, Cause listen, it's weird and all that. And like, you know, if you want to talk about pound for pound the most homophobic culture in the entire entertainment industry. And I hate the word homophobic because I think it's a dumb word because it's not like people are scared. It's not like, oh my God, ooh, gays, I'm scared. I hate it. But it's like conspiracy. I hate the word conspiracy because it took on a weird meaning now, but it's the only way to describe yeah. what I'm talking about. You, you know what I mean? <clears throat> so with Joe and, and that whole thing, I mean, I mean, with the hip hop industry, like, bro, I, I, it, <laughs> It's so funny now to watch hip hop start to get canceled, right? Yeah, it's been a while since they tried to cancel it. It's been decades. Ever, bro? They never. They only. Well, they tried to cancel it for like, for like the you know violence and like when they ran over the tapes with the steam. <laughs> yeah. And, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and all that crazy shit, but like they never tried to cancel it like in this way, like you know, like, like bro, <laughs> hip hop is so anti-gay and so bro it's like it's gonna be hard to get that completely out of rappers dialogue and how they talk backstage like you <clears throat> bro i don't i can't get this tickle out my throat pardon me bro it's all good buddy and for the audio sorry sorry everyone sorry but um you know it, you might be able to get it out of the songs right like, you're not going to have people in songs anymore, you know, probably dropping the, the F-bomb, I guess we'll call it now. You know yeah, I mean? <laughs> to be safe, just to be safe. Yeah, yeah, you know, just to be a little extra safe. But, uh, but like, you know what I mean, bro, behind the scenes, bro, like, the, like it's just, like, bro, like, hood black dudes do not play that gay shit at all. But they, they like, like to dress, they're dressing like the gay guys now, no, though. It's, it's weird. Those aren't hood black dudes. Those aren't hood dudes. Those are, like... These like weird new generation Skittles rapper, you know, like like <laughs> you know what I mean? That's not mob deep of this day. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? That's not the locks, that's not biggie, that's not those aren't like the, the their street in where they came up, you know, they're from ghettos, a lot of them, and this, this, that, and some of them might have may, maybe might have came up in hard times, but even it, it, the, the the edges are nerfed in the hood now, too. For everyone now, you you know, you know, like for, for so many years, bro, right? 
men in general weren't supposed to talk about mental health or anything like that, right? And black men add another hundred layers onto that, you know? Yeah. But now it's come to the point where all the edges are a little nerfed. You know what I mean? Even in the hood, even where they're shooting, this and that. Like half those dudes that are shooting and killing, they're, 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 they're super sweet as well. That doesn't <laughs> make them scary. You know what I mean? Their it's brains like, just aren't developed. That's yeah. all. Bro, and they'll rat you out. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. like th- th- these shooters now, they'll suck your dick, they'll shoot you, and they'll rat you out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it's it's a whole other breed out here, bro. You I'm know? thinking all the shooting is the shooting is a result of the tight pants because you can't run, you can't fight, and you're you get these sagging pants, but they're tight as shit. You can't, you have no choice but to shoot. And the pockets are so tight on these things, you you can't fit a gun in your pocket either. They it's I don't know, it. yo, it's no, fucking so weird, man. So you just gotta hold it. You got no choice but to hold it. So that makes yeah. it easier to shoot. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, nah, it, 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 it's a whole new era, man. You know, it, it's, it's, a, I was just talking about this before with somebody. It's like, and you know what? It started, it started like when, and I like the nerd rap a little bit too coming up. Like, I liked what, what was considered the nerd rap of my era, your era, like, you know, the Tribe Called Quest and like the De La Soul. Like, I love all that smooth, conscious hip hop and all that, right? But yeah. But those dudes still had like either connections that were legit streetwise, or they were actually street. Like they would still punch you in the face, even though they'd get on a track. Like a sippy dippy da wap too for the yeah, you know. But they'll still knock you out. You know what I mean? Like try like like Q Tip, who got one of the softest voices in hip hop, and which is a great rapper, and I love a lot of his music. He's a real dude. He's like official in the street. Q Tip, like you know what I mean? He'll he'll hit you with that light tone and fuck you up. <laughs> you know. There was that uh, skateboard rapper, uh, Lupe Fiasco. And I remember, I swore I, I read something that he was indicted on something for laundering money for uh, for drug gangs or some shit like that, too. Lupe? Yeah. Yeah, Lupe. That's funny, too. Yeah, Lu- yeah, but he's definitely he's definitely more on the... He, he was laundering money, you said? That's what I had read, yeah. Yeah, but there you go. That's like, a, that's a nerd crime. You know yeah, I, mean? I guess so. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean? That that's the goons, the goon scene. He got some money, you know, the dudes in the street that were probably getting. He's probably getting money. extorted for it in that. They, they, <laughs> they, bro, they probably <laughs> they probably hemmed him up, and they like, yo, listen, Lupe, it's what you gonna do, man? You know what I mean? Every hundred k, I'm gonna put fifty k on top, and you give me back, you know, some some dumb shit. I'm yeah. Telling. But but that's what slowly changed it. It was like, like, like when I was coming up in the nineties, you couldn't get into like ciphers freestyling or jump on you know shows and grab microphones unless you know like you know like dudes would get thrown off the stage like these nerds that now are successful and and listen i respect eminem as far as his skill level right one of the best flows in hip-hop history i think lyrically he's super overrated because he'll say anything to keep a rhyme scheme going it doesn't matter if it makes sense you know (laughs) that's a lot of people now too though yeah, but but this is what I'm saying. Like he, <clears throat> he like kind of started the era of like where like a, 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 I am. Look at me, I'm super white and I'm corny and I rap good and like it like it kind of opened the door for like other cornballs, black and white, right? Because now white cornballs could do it. So now black cornballs are like, oh shit, if a white cornball could do it, I could definitely do hip hop now. You know what I mean? And it's like the, like there's been like this like over saturation. Of like where hip hop once again edges nerfed, hip hop has become softer and softer and softer and softer, and the end result is dudes dressing in skirts. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, the only the only Eminem album I can still listen to is that first uh, Slim Shady one. Yeah, and uh, that's the only one I can go back to and listen to all the time. I'm really stuck. I'm like I'm stuck back in that time. I, it's I don't have like uh, the time or the energy to consume new hip hop and like spend the time listening to a new guy's album to not like it and not uh, absorb anything from it. So I just go to, I just keep with my old classics or yeah, fucking even older music, like old blues and jazz type shit. Yeah, me too. Me too. I don't listen to, uh, to too many new rappers at all. You know what I mean? I'm basically digging into crates for most, uh, most hip hop I listen to. And I think that was his best album in my opinion as well. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. Even As a lot I, of these guys is they're starving, right? They're starving yeah. artists, and they finally make it, and then they lose some of that fire. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he started leaning on it too a little bit too much. Like he started leaning on 
the image, right? Instead of just keeping on being dope, he started leaning on like, oh shit, I'm selling 7 million records in places that never sell hip hop records. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he was selling millions in like the Dakotas. You know what I mean? You know, mm. it, there was the, the black hip hop artists do not sell in places like that for the most part. Yeah. But when Eminem came out, he started selling the bulk of his records outside of urban areas. So I think he dove into that. He was smart. I mean, it's a smart play. Fair play to him. Made him fucking one of the richest rappers ever, you know? Yeah, the other, the albums, I did like the albums uh, Recovery and Relapse, but I was also on drugs at the time. Okay. So maybe that's why I could relate to them too. Yeah, yeah, but I found like uh, a lot of people say it too, that the music's changed from like drug dealing and hustling rap to being a junkie and, uh, you know, just partying and taking drugs all the time. Yeah. I, I think I think you're right about that. I would have to agree with that. It went from like being uh more being well, well you got to think about it too though. The drugs that were talked about being sold, cocaine to a degree, but like crack. You know what I mean? That's not exactly a glory drug. You know? No, what I mean? not, no. you, know you know what I mean? That's not like some like woo. Let's nobody's crack. singing about <laughs> nobody's singing yeah. about smoking crack. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even even though there's probably plenty of rappers who smoke some crack at some point. Oh, for sure. DMX was all over that shit. Well, he was literally, yeah, yeah. DMX, yeah. DMX had issues, issues. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and no, I'm sure there's plenty of them too. It's funny, bro. It's it, it's funny too what, what you said with the drug doing. Because I remember like right around when I stopped doing like E, you know, and doing shit like that, probably like early 2000s. Like, you know, I had like a little run of E for a year or two where I did it a good amount of time. My yeah. boy Corey from the Bronx, like two years after I stopped doing it, it got to the hood heavy. And then the, the hood was all about the Molly, like early 2000s, 2002, 2000, like four, three, that pocket. And then like you, like you seen once it hit the culture, it, it like it slowly. Once again, it's these, it's these, it's these slow, th it's these little things. Started out with E in the clubs, fucking bitches, and then just progresses, progresses, progresses. And now these do now the hood does all the drugs the white boys do. Yeah. Back in the eighties, nineties. Up to like early 2000s, there were certain drugs that like the hood did, certain drugs that the suburbs did. And it was a little crossover here and there. But now it's just like, you know, all the drugs are everywhere <laughs> at this yeah. point, you know? I remember, uh, yeah, when Ecstasy first came around, I, I only did it. I had sold a lot of it, but I only did it a few times because that yeah. sketch the next morning, I just couldn't handle it. I remember the first time doing it, I split a yellow Pikachu with uh, one of my buddies and we were like 15 we went out just all fucked up the whole night. And by the end of the night, we were too fucked up to go home and like have our parents see us. So my buddy knew where this guy had left a key under his mat that his parents were on vacation. Yeah. So we go, we get to the house, keys under the mat. We open the door and we get in. We're like two steps in and I freeze. And I'm like, there's somebody upstairs. I hear somebody upstairs. And uh, maybe a minute goes by and then realize that it's a bungalow. There, there's no top floor at all. We're just so <laughs> tweaked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we're running around the house and we're, we're just idiot thieves, right? We're taking whatever we can fit in our pockets type of shit. Of yeah. And uh, fucking what happened? So I, I went, I had to take a big shit, right? From uh, the booze that I was drinking, the E that I was taking. I had like a, a big chemical shit brewing. Yeah, yeah. So I go in, drop a big shit in the toilet. And I'm like, I'm going to leave this shit here for when these people come back from vacation. And it's going to be hilarious when they see it. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going room to room. And then I go, I open this uh, door in another bedroom. And then uh, there's a washroom there. And I look and there's a huge shit in the toilet. And I'm like, who would leave on vacation and, and not flush the toilet before they left? So I was so fucking high that I didn't realize it was one of those bathrooms with like a hallway entrance and a bedroom entrance. Like, <laughs> yeah, was yeah, so yeah. tweaked. Didn't even realize it was my big shit that I had left in yeah. there. Did, didn't, even and, recognize, uh, didn't even recognize your own work. You know no, I mean? no. It up, was a ma huh? masterpiece, too. <laughs> and uh, after that, I started, I started doing that as a thing. Like... Uh, Cause I was breaking into houses and cars like to support yeah. my weed habit before I was selling weed. Yeah. Um, cause I was like, people say weed's not addicting, but I, I, I had to have been addicted to it cause the shit I was doing to uh, support it. But I guess that's where, where a drug problem starts is the problem is you don't have the money to pay for it. But, uh, yeah. So every time I broke into a house, I leave, I try to leave a big shit in the toilet and then spray fire extinguisher around the house. And that was like my uh, calling card. <laughs> that's hilarious, bro. Yeah. Yeah, E. Yeah, I went on a nice little run of E. A nice little run. Of e. I probably did it maybe like, I don't know, man. 
And this isn't pills, this is nights, you know what I mean? Probably like 30 times, maybe 20, 20, 25 times, you know? I, I did I did a lot of like psychedelic type shit when I was young. Like I did acid. I, I was on an acid run from like 15 to like 16 and change. Jeez, eh? Which yeah. is like on weekends or every whenever you can get it? I would say mostly weekends, you know what I mean? Because I Because at that time, I was living in my father's house, right? Who he was renting from my aunt he fucked up he was like a real deal addict like it was a whole mess but but i basically had like that was the house you know what i mean so like like i was the house that everyone came to chill in smoke you know yeah. what i mean you know fucking we, we had this crazy tv bro um how old are you 36 so <clears throat> so you probably remember some of these do you remember those big projection tvs but the ones the ones that the front would literally open up like a spaceship and the lights would be there, like the red, the white light would be there, the three lights that like make, you know. Yeah, like the bulb, right? Big bulb in the yeah. back, pushing yeah, out you, front. No, no, you'd see it. Like this shit I had, bro. And like my father, like, my, like I said, my father was a fucking half a fiend. You know what I mean? Good guy, great guy, just not a great father and a fiend. You know what I mean? But he would also, he would always get, you know, when you hang out with crackheads and you're a half a crackhead, you get crackhead deals. You know what I mean? So he yeah. got this crazy TV, bro. This shit was like, like probably 54 inches at the time. The screen was almost like, looked like a movie theater screen, even though, but a small version, you know what I mean? And it yeah. would literally close and open like this. And it would open all the way. <clears throat> and then there would be the three lights, four lights, the mirror, the whole mechanism was like exposed in the front, bro. It was crazy. You could like sit in it damn near. Yeah, bro. I never saw one of those ones for sure. Bro, bro, imagine, imagine being 16 you know, 15, tripping on acid, playing fucking <laughs> NBA Live. You know what I mean? On on this big-ass fucking spaceship fucking TV. You know what I mean? But, uh, but yeah, man. Yeah, I did that. We I did that E for a little while. I did too many. I, I did too many psychedelics when I was here. I think it's like, it's like what has made me really good creatively, you know? I, like, opened my mind in a lot of, like, great ways. But mm. but it probably also did a black hole worth of damage through my cranium. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like a pulse already. Like, <laughs> you know? I never uh, I never did acid because it was uh, I felt like a too long of a high. I remember a guy offered it to me, and I'm like, well, how long is it gonna last? He's like, oh, well, twelve hours. And I'm like, well, what if I just eat half of it? And he's like, twelve hours. <laughs> I was like, I don't have time for that shit. <laughs> bro, bro, the acid in like the early nineties to like just about the late 90s bro legit legit five dollars 12 to 18 hours yeah that's crazy bro there was times where like you would be fucking 18 hours into that shit 14 hours like just please stop <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> face melting oh my god bro you know yeah, i did shrooms a few times too but i wasn't yeah. uh I find that I think like those psychedelics do, they have, there's this point during your trip where uh, everything kind of clicks and makes sense. And I remember every time that I'd taken them, I'd be at this point where I'm like, I don't need drugs. I can quit drugs right now and uh, live a healthy life and whatever. But then I realize I'm on drugs right now thinking this. And so I think like when the night ends, you have that choice the next day to like go straight and live a different life or just the same cycle you're always living in. And, uh, Never changed anything for me. I just did the same shit the next day. Because you were probably young. You are probably still fairly young when you did it. I, I think it's the same for me. Like, I didn't do them in, like, if you did them now, they would either make you completely nuts or be life-changing in, <laughs> in an amazing way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, one of those two things would end up happening. When I was doing them then, I was just doing them because I'm like, ah, I'm young. Let's be high as much as possible. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, so I didn't get, I think it opened up doors of perception by mistake, but it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like epiphanies and shit, you know? Did you ever, you ever try DMT? No, nah, I never did any of that. Like that craziness was like done. Like I was done with like major drugs, probably like for the most part by like 2002, three. Oh yeah. You know, I might've sniffed Coke like five, six times, like between like 2003, 2010, maybe. You know what I mean? But yeah. I was, I was, I wish. Yeah. I never tried it either, but, uh, like I was doing blow, like it was going out of style. This is just prop yeah. cocaine. Just so you know here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> this just so you don't think I'm like your average douchebag. This is, Can this is stacks of Canadian tire money. <laughs> it's supposed to be, uh, this is actual Canadian currency, but it only works okay. at one store. <laughs> yeah. One store. 
Yeah, it's like, like uh, Chuck E. Cheese, but you know, but but that money. Yeah, it's like uh, yeah. appliance. So you know, this this money actually, uh, when people would try to rip you off with drugs, they would because it looks like old Canadian money and feels like it too. Yeah. So they, uh, you put a few real bills on the outside and then fill it up with Canadian tire money on the inside, and sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. Hell yeah! But yeah, it was Hell a big, yeah. that was a big scam. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I was doing blow like it went out of style. Like I fucked my whole nose up where. Yeah, yeah. The whole yeah. thing's all collapsed and years of sleepless nights and fucking forcing oh, my eyes man. shut and shit like that. Not worth it at all. Yeah, I did like Coke. All right, Coke was like my pop struggle choice. So because of that, I didn't even do Coke for the first time until like I was 22, 23. Like all, all other drugs I did for the most part when I was young, you know what I mean? Like we're younger. How old are but you? I, me, I'm, um, um, uh, uh, I, I turned 35 just recently for the, you know, like a few times in a row. You know, I'm on like, I'm on like, I'm on like my third, fourth, maybe fifth time. Let's say that. You know what I'm saying? I can't yeah. admit it, bro. I still rap a little bit. I got hair in my mouth or some shit. My hair is long, bro. I'm like, I'm like, I can't even yell at my girl no more. Like the past few years, like whenever I got hair in my mouth, I complain. <laughs> now that shit's me and shit. Yeah, look, I wish I had some some hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anytime I get asked, anytime I get asked for ID, instead of like pulling my mask down, I just pull my hat up and yeah, yeah, yeah. he does it. That does it. <laughs> yeah, now nah, Coke, Coke, I probably did maybe like fifteen times, like nights. You know what I mean? And I never paid for it. That was more like you know, so many of my boys were fucking like you. You know what I mean? Like how you were on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they'd be like, "Come on, bro, come on." Let's get an eight ball. Then it's three in the morning. Yo, yo, call your boy. Yeah. Call your boy, bro. <laughs> Let's get another one. Then seven in the morning. Yo, bro. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's a coke can get you, man. I've seen, I see sure. people really get caught caught by that shit. Yeah. There's a real big thing about it that nobody talks about, and uh, I mean the media and like the movies and stuff, just in general. Uh, total false advertising like they make it look like a sexy drug like you're gonna fuck like a porn star and it does a complete opposite right it kills your dick and i can't even put a sentence together when i'm all coked up but uh yeah i just to get off that sketch i ended up um like taking opioids like oxys and shit just to get the sketch off the next day oh, great or that job night. great yeah. job bro genius genius yeah, yeah, great fucking job great job yeah. that'll that'll graduate you to heroin at some point it did, oh, yeah, it exactly. Did. What it did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, bro. Yeah. No, seventy-five percent of the dudes I know that started fucking with opioids, you know, like right around when it when it popped hard, oh five, oh six, oh seven, oh eight, oh nine, oh ten, you know, when it really started. <laughs> yeah, bro, like seventy-five percent of them started fucking with heroin at least a little, and fifteen percent of them still do to this day. And I hate to say it, but probably like ten are gone. You know what I mean? Yeah, Over man. Earth. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, so yeah, man, Coke, 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 bro, Coke is crack. That's what people don't understand. You know what I mean? Like, they're not that far apart. Yeah, there's not too much of a difference. Yeah. Nah, bro. It, it's a difference societally. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the drug yeah. itself, the compounds of the drug are almost identical. You know what I mean? It's just that, like, from what I understand, like, what you feel at your highest with Coke you'll feel that way like right away quicker for a shorter amount of time with yeah so crack. i never got into smoking crack but i had a lot of buddies that did and yeah, uh, yeah so from what i gain what i get from it is just it's it's way more intense but it's way shorter of a high and yeah. uh you're yeah. jonesing probably more than you are than just to do a line yeah like two like two two hours you know what i mean like you, you'll be done with all your shit you know what i mean yeah. Coke, you at least like you know you'll sniff that for like three to six hours you know four hours maybe you know what I mean? And you'll just want more because you just want to stay. You know what I mean? Yeah, you the know? come down is terrible on Coke. It's yeah. fucking brutal. Coke heads don't wait for it to fall. You know what I mean? No, no. They no. don't wait. Like, they're, like <laughs> they're, they're, they're fucking, they still got a couple fucking, you know, seven lines left when they make that next call out of time. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you like, gotta save something. <laughs> yeah, oh, so yeah. I was saying, so the one, the big Coke head thing that not a lot of people talk about is uh, that the big thing is a lot of people say it's like a social drug but it's, it's really antisocial. A lot of people and like that I knew and myself would they grab and then they go home by themselves to do the blow. And uh, you're just doing blow and jerking off all night. And yeah. it's like a, 
a four or five hour thing. You'll you'll burn through a hundred pages on Pornhub and you'll you'll still never finish. But uh, yeah. it's yeah. a fucked up it's a fucked up ritual. It's a terrible drug ritual to yeah. get caught in. See, see, for me, <clears throat> it was good for me because like I was a big drinker from like shit, bro. Probably from like sixteen to like almost thirty. You know what I mean? I was like a steady heavy drinker for the most part. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that shit, bro, it married that shit hand in hand, bro. Like, yeah. I can't sh- I can't shut the fuck up when I'm sober. You know what I mean? So what, what, when I was like fucking yacked up and drunk, bro, <laughs> bro, I fucking, bro, I remember one time, bro, me me and this one cat, this other dude my boy was with, he, he spit, he rapped to another white boy from Staten Island. He turned out to be pretty decent, actually. He's all right. He's pretty good. And uh, we we're freestyling, right? And I, I was always like a, big freestyler coming up. Like I used to entertain shows, just going around people in the room or standing on stage, having people throw me words, like all, all that shit back in the day. Yeah. So, sick. <clears throat> so I was like teaching him how to freestyle a little better. You know what I mean? And then because he was like a good writer, but didn't really freestyle. And then my boy who didn't freestyle ever at all, he was so coked up. He's like, fuck it. I'm going to do it tonight too, bro. We were freestyling and shit for so many. Cause I was teaching like the way I freestyle. It's like, it's just a, make words rhyme. And try to make it make sense in between. You know yeah, what I mean? Okay. Focus on the rhyming word. And then in between. try. So like if you like cat. Slap. Bat. Bat. So bro. Me and my boy called me the next day. Like too. Like oh no. The matter of <laughs> fact. I called him while I was trying to go to sleep. I'm like bro. I'm like I don't. I, I'm going crazy. Because I don't think I'm ever going to stop trying to freestyle. Like in my, I'm laying down on my pillow. Saying no words, but in my head, I'm like, he's like, bro. <laughs> he's like, I wasn't even gonna say anything. He's like, I can't sleep. I keep trying to freeze that, <laughs> bro. Like, I thought I was losing it. I thought that was it. I thought like I was like gonna be a psych patient just in the sitting in the room, like, car, bar, scar, the straight jacket and shit. Yeah. yeah bro. <laughs> I had some buddies that would freestyle, but uh, I was always like too insecure. This is during like high school. I was too insecure to do that shit. Same with dancing. I was never into like, uh, yeah, you know, the break dancing and shit like that. Yeah, I, I was never dancing, man. Like that. Like I could never dance. Like I, I, th- I think half of it is I thought I was too tough at the time, like too cool. Like I can't dance. Yeah, yeah that's that was probably my thing too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I missed out on like, and I was thinking about this the other day, bro. Like I missed out on some good music even. In like the nineties, because like when I came up, I like listened to hip hop kind of, but also listened to like Metallica, Guns N' Roses, you know, Megadeth. Yeah. Like I was a big hair metal and hair hair rock, you know, dude too. And like once I started listening to hip hop, I would still listen to the older shit, but anything new that was in that vein, you know, except Nirvana. Nirvana got through. You know what I mean? They 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 were fucking geniuses in my mind. You know what I mean? But. But like anything else, like any of that alternative rock that started coming out at that time or like, you know, any of that. I was like, nah, that shit is corny. That shit is corny. <laughs> bro, you crazy. That's so corny, bro. You know, and, and now I look back. I'm like, yo, I listen to some of the songs. I'm like, I could have liked this back then, but I was too much of a fucking, you know, fake tough guy. You know? Yeah, I was a. Uh... I guess like grade seven and then getting into high school, I didn't really know what music I liked either. I was just listening to what friends listened to and yeah. I'd be like, Oh, I like it. It's, it sounds good or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. Um, the first rap album I had was the Wu Tang forever, the double disc. Okay. And it was on top of that, it was censored. So every swear word was like a clang of a sword or some kind of ninja oh, sound. I remember that. I remember that edited one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I had no clue what they were saying, what they were talking about. So I put the CD away and then, you know, maybe five years later, I'm like selling Coke and talking and I'm on the, in the street and learning the slang and all that. Yeah. But uh, so it finally made more sense. But I was new to selling Coke. So I was hearing them talking about uh, cooking or cutting the Coke with baking yeah. soda. Right. Not yeah. knowing that was cooking crack. Yeah. So I, was, I started cutting my Coke with baking soda and ah. I was burning up everybody's sinuses and oh. getting all kinds of complaints because it's not water soluble right so it's just gonna yeah. it just sits in your fucking sinuses until you yeah, blow it back bro. out yeah it was terrible and I was yeah, sniffing bro. it too so I was just bro. fucking screwed everybody bro like one one of your batches is like completely responsible for like mo- like deviated septums you know oh, like yeah. you know how it usually takes a long time nah not with your batch I Get swear I was getting uh, fucking Narcan shit <laughs> I thought it was done. leaking like uh, there was so much shit coming out of my nose. I thought it was like brain fluid coming out because yeah. it was running so much. 
And then I showed up to a party one night and I saw one of these, uh, like these custies that I had this chick and she had a burn, like her nostril down to her lip was burnt from the, the soda just burning on her skin. And I, oh, I felt like an idiot. And then I actually looked it up and started using proper stuff to cut it. That's so hilarious. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Was, Didn't understand the slang. Niacin, right? Niacin's a good one. I haven't heard of that, but what I was, I always yeah. use like, um, dextrose or like corn sugar from the bulk barn yeah. or, yeah. uh, yeah. In isotol is another uh, yeah. like a supplement, and it's all, yeah. all kinds of stuff out there. Yeah, nice. Not fentanyl though. Not fentanyl. No, you know? but that, but that's the type of shit they're doing now. You know, that's the type of shit they're doing. Now. A lot of the people that are dying from from overdoses, and like they thought they were getting coke. It's because yeah. See, yeah. I don't know if I. But there's so many. I feel strongly about this one because I find that there's there's no logic whatsoever putting a stimulant into a depressant, right? So if, if you're mixing fentanyl to coke. That customer's not going to get the coke high, right? He's going to be nodding off instead of instead of tweaking out. So you're, the customer might die, or he's never going to come back and buy the coke, and he's going to tell all of his friends that the coke sucked. Or, or he gets hooked on fentanyl or heroin because that shit <clears throat> is so addictive. That fentanyl shit, like it's more addictive than heroin. I think I think it's like I think it's like a hundred times stronger or two hundred times stronger and like twenty times more addictive. You know what I mean? So it could go either so way. You know maybe I mean? if it's a I could see it if it's a first time user, like a guy doing yeah. coke for the first time, yeah, and yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's his impression of what coke is. Yeah. Uh, but I've done yeah. I've done a lot of research too. Like uh, there was a study in 2019 where it was uh, in 2019 they had I think 16,000 deaths um, overdoses from cocaine. And 10,000 of those deaths were cocaine mixed with a synthetic opioid, uh, not including methadone. So, you yeah. know, fentanyl That's or whatever. Period, yeah. So, so that was, then I was looking at the statistics, the statistics of how much coke uh, makes it into the U.S. every year. And it's on the very small scale of it is uh, 100 metric tons. So that's yeah. like uh, 100,000 kilograms. Yeah. Um, so... I got people saying that, you know, my buddy did one key bump and then he died or he did one line and it killed him. So I tried to break it down. Like, let's be generous and say that's a really big line, like a quarter of a gram line, a 2.5. Yeah. So if that one line is killing one person, that means a gram, that gram is going to kill four people. Meaning that kilogram that's a thousand grams is going to kill 4,000 people. Yeah. And uh, when you've got over a hundred thousand kilograms coming in, there should be a lot more than 10,000 cocaine opioid related deaths yeah and you got to think out of that 10,002 was we say like at least half of that are just coke heads that got bad coke they never do opioids whatever but the other half of that 10,000 would be you know coke and opioid users because a lot of yeah. heavy drug addicts use both exactly um, absolutely so and i think too so all these kilograms coming in so let's say you've got i think the math worked out to something like two out of those it worked out to something anyways that I broke down the math. It was like these overdoses would be concentrated in really small areas, right? Because one town or city, like a, a, a kilogram shows up in that town or city and it's going to be gone by the morning. Like you know, there's thousands of drug addicts in every town. So you'd see real, like a real small concentrated area of overdose. Um, if you had one of those tainted kilograms, um, you know, you'd have thousands of people dying just over that one weekend, right? As soon as that key landed. But uh, there's also people say that's like cross contamination from the scale. Listen, bro, there is absolutely no question. Coke isn't like a kill you kind of drug, really. You know what I mean? Like there... coke, coke will ruin your life. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that's what it's good at. You know what I mean? It's good at straight ruining people's lives. But it's not really like I don't know too many dudes. Matter of fact, I don't know any dudes that like their thing is coke and coke is what got them. You know? Yeah. If, if coke is what got them, it's because the same night they took. You know, they, they sniffed an eight ball and a half. They took two Xanax. You know what I mean? They, yeah. they, they, they took a perk and a half. You know, they, they like, they, that's what, Coke, Coke, Coke is a ruin your life drug. I mean, you could die from it, but usually if you're going to die from Coke, from straight Coke, it's going to be because your heart explodes or some shit. Yeah, or like you're, you're shooting it and you have a heart attack or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's definitely, bro, it's the fentanyl for sure, bro. That, that shit is, that shit is, you ever see, um, it's a really good show. Really good show. Uh, Trafficked, I think it's called. With Miriam, uh, what the fuck is this chick's name, bro? You gotta watch the show because you sound like you're really, like you're into a lot. And it's not only, mm -hmm. it's not only about um, 
about drugs. It's like this chick, she's like a big time. I got, I'll find a name for her because I don't want to waste time looking right now, but I'll find a name for her and I'll let you know. But she's like a, like a, like a real deal investigative journalist. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. she, she's one of the main people who broke the opioid epidemic stories. Miriam something is her name. She's a chick. And in this show, she, uh, there's like eight episodes, right? So one episode, she goes to Jamaica to like sit with all the people who do the phone scams. Like, it's like the Jamaican fucking like yeah, mur yeah. murderers that run that shit. She goes down, follows cocaine from when it's grown, dried, driven, walked, crossed the border. And she goes, she like digs deep in with these people and, and, and follows every step of dr uh, gun running, cocaine, fentanyl. Like old bro, it, the show is fucking. It's it, bro. This this woman is is a savage, bro. The yeah. Situation she's in, you know what I mean? Sounds like, like a good one. Ah, bro, great, great. And it's like it's on History Channel too, so like you usually don't expect like, you know, there's sometimes there's good shows on those channels nowadays. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You know, but it's it's like it's 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 solid. You know what I mean? So in the original Wiggas podcast, podcast, you guys talked about uh, they're bringing out a new GHB, a new type of the date rape drug. Yeah, it, 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 they, they approved a drug that's basically the same exact thing as GHB um, for a specific kind of sleeping disorder. You know what I mean? That's how, that's what it got uh, got labeled under, you know? Yeah. And, what was the, what was wrong with the first GHB? Well, it's not fucking, it's not, it's not legal. You know what I mean? Like, like it was probably legal at some point, then it was made illegal. You know what I mean? And just like anything else, like Quaaludes. You know, Quaaludes were illegal at some point, and then they realized that, you know, Cosby and all of Hollywood <laughs> was fucking <laughs> was ramrodding sleeping actresses. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? And uh, they they uh they, they got rid of that. You know, but but the ironic thing for me, hold on, my camera was right, there you go. It was fuzzing out a little bit. Oh, uh, it's crazy though, right? Like w w the funniest thing about it, I barely, I didn't, I, well, I did talk about it on a podcast, but like. It was on the tail end of a of a C word related video. I don't want to say the word because you know top button, you know the C word, not the original C word, not cancer, the new C. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. <laughs> and, and, and they like hid that shit in like the back end of that video, like oh, oh yeah, that you know this that all oh, the numbers for this, the numbers for that, and then in other news, the FDA approved the GHB drug. Meanwhile, right around the same time, the Pfizer thing, they they, they sneak that in. You know, you know, just sneak. I don't know, bro. It, it, that's some dark. That like so much for the Me Too movement, right? Yeah, yeah. They're bringing out just the, the new, uh, <laughs> the new series, the 2.0. Yeah. yeah, that only rich people could afford. That oh, they said it's like a hundred thousand dollars a year for the drug or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, crazy. To top it so, off, it's only rich. So only Harvey Weinstein's and Bill Cosby's and any other director that wants to get his hands on some of that shit. <laughs> like, yeah. You got to be special to get the top shelf uh, oh, man, date rates up. So I had a, I went to a dentist. This is probably a few years ago, and I had these videos because they gave me some kind of shit, I, just like a date rape drug thing. I was killed. I don't remember any of it. Yeah, but here's yeah, a couple yeah. clicks of uh, my wife was videotaping me during the whole thing. What? What's stuck here? What's stuck your lips? Your lips are stuck. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Are you awake? You told me to keep you up. Sacrifice the likes of his masters and sacrifice the likes of his masters and whatever threw his cats down into a kitty pool. The dogs out. He's just trying to get this to it. That was, that was bad audio on that one but i was talking some shit about sacrificing animals to get a toy for like a happy meal or something i heard Fucking, cats in kitty pool. yeah That's drowned weird. cats in a kitty pool yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and killed the dogs i was like holy fuck man but didn't remember any of it that's that gas right that's the gas. Uh, it wasn't the gas it was no. a pill they cr they crushed the pill up in the drink and gave it to me and it was like 15 20 minutes later i was out they heard about you. They're like, yo, this kid, <laughs> he sniffs. Let's make him comfortable. Crush that shit up. Let him sniff it. Fuck yeah. It. <laughs> yo. Yeah, I was looking. So I didn't do drugs. Uh, I had been like maybe five years sober at that point. So I was yeah. looking forward to every one of these sessions because I'm like, I'm going to go get fucked right up. 
And I was yeah. telling my wife to try to keep me awake so I can enjoy it, but yeah, fucking, yeah, yeah. I was just out. When you play the videos, how are you playing them? Uh, so I'm just clicking them off my brand, like okay. uh, in their wanna... comments brand. Now, just so you know, and I, you probably do know, but if you wanted to play something where you wanted to at times be able to talk while it's on, like the, you mi- click our, the mic. Yeah, no, our mics get muted. If you go through brand, our mics always get muted. Yeah, so I can press my mic and uh, and have it go. But is there somewhere else I can load them? Yeah, yeah. So that Do it. You see on the bottom right, right there where it says like mute, stop cam. I mean, yeah, mute, stop cam, cam mic, and share. These. Oh wait, you're doing it through your phone, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. If you were okay. doing it through a desktop, there's a share button, and like you could either share your screen or share, or or you could like just have like a, you could have like ten videos in your session when you when you pull it up. Yeah, okay. All I have figured out is just how to play the video in the middle of the yeah, screen yeah, yeah. and fucking that's it. I just wanted to let you know just in case, like, because if you're ever going to do anything where you wanted people to, like, react or talk over, you know you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so when that goes up, my I have the option of turning the mic back on. So uh, just so you know, when the videos come up, I'm trying to do, like, trying to remember to do that so we can talk cool. through the video. Oh, so you can hear me. Too. So, so what, like, even the audience would be able to hear us? Yeah, yeah. As long okay. as I press that button, as long as I see that button light up, yeah, yeah. I gotta look for that button. I didn't know that. You're gonna make me check now. Look, I just went to look. That's how burnt I am. We're on, <laughs> we're, on, we're on your session right now, and I just went to go check real quick. There so, you are go. you guys using uh, your podcast? There, are you guys using the paid version? Is that why it looks so sick? Like you guys got such a sick setup? Um. Well, yeah, I do. the The main reason, well, I guess it is. I guess it is because you because because uh-huh. I could put the. Uh, I don't know though. All I use, see, because you got the, the the thing is right. If you were on your computer, you'd have a couple more options, right? You have uh, you have the brand, the banner. D- can you do the ticker on yours? I think all I got is brand comments and banner. I wonder if you could do, because I do pay. I do pay the extra couple dollars. That's probably uh, that's probably why I I know the Streamyard branding gets off. Yeah, I pay. and then uh, I just put the, the 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 image on the back, and then I use the uh, see what's good too. I don't know if you uh, do you have options as far as how you can lay out the video from the phone. I can't remember. Uh, yeah, I think I got like a few options. I don't got too many. Yeah, I see. Peep game, peep game. Do that last one you just did. See now, this one is good to do a lot of the time, right? Like, like play a video. Well, no, no well that, but. Partly that, but also because you could put your your image behind this. So you could get like a real dope high definition image and it'll always be on the screen behind you. You know, so so you could get a real dope like uh, wallpaper or a fucking ping made. And then, yeah, I tried to do the wallpaper and I think that was part of something you got to pay and sign up for. Yeah. No, no, there's a couple programs that could put you on to. Yeah, so, OK. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple good ones that like that have free free options where, where you could still get, uh, get some real clean looking, uh, you know, imagery and shit like that. Because this way, see what's also good about this, if you notice, right? So I'm not set up for this. So my light is off. So bang, I'll move the light right there, but mm. it gives you a little more. You could actually put your phone sideways too. And the if wide you have the widescreen, right? Yeah. I believe you can check it out. Just let's, you know, why not test it out while we're, while we're here, you know, I right, see now. See, okay. Yeah, but then, but then it's gonna mess up where, uh, where you got. Yeah, the yeah. But anyway, for, for future, for next time, yeah. Yeah, for future, I mean, if you wanted to, you know what I mean, because, uh, because um, that that that'll do good. And what's good about that other view that we just had too, is it's not as close up, so it actually makes the video look better. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's another part of. That's why Dust, even though he he has like a decent webcam, but not like a really good one, but he looks decent mainly because i put it back like that if i would have put it how me and you are right now it probably it probably wouldn't even look as good as yours i don't think it'd be like it'd be like right in the same you know right in the same vein you know yeah i've been thinking about uh stepping up and paying a few bucks to see what uh you know see what extras it comes with see but it's not worth it if you don't have the desktop i don't think yeah okay yeah i, th- yeah. I, I think if you're gonna do that i, I suggest you do it but it's probably better off doing it once you're either running off a laptop or 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 a PC, you know. Yeah. Right. Okay. You know? True. True. Because because then then you have the option of doing your branding. You have the option, like, can you put the banners or only the names? Like, what, what, what when you go to banners, does it give you an option to like, like you know how I have the shit at the bottom saying live call in and all that uh, dumb shit? 
Yeah, so you can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Little yeah, uh, example things. Yeah, and, and then you edit those, right? And you could put them as ticker or you could put them as where they stay on the screen like that. And you could put all your shit where it's like always running across the bottom of the screen. You know, all your all your social medias. And then what that also helps, like, I don't know. So, yeah, you do. You edit, then upload, right? Yeah, I'll usually like I'll live stream it onto a Facebook thing and then I'll do a bit of editing and I'll usually, I usually don't do too much editing. I like the yeah. like the genuine just put it out there. If we fuck up, we fuck up. Who okay. cares? And, and okay. that's the thing. right? But if you do upload it, right? Yeah. Like if you leave it up there live, whatever, then that's one thing. But either way, it's good because then you have your branding always like there. So if you yeah. decide to take it down and re-upload it, you don't got to worry about putting your watermark or your anything else. Your branding's just always on the screen. You know yeah, what I mean? So yeah. it's good for those purposes. And then if you get a really sharp background, the other way we just did it looks real dope. You know what I mean? That's why the you know it's it's yeah, those like that widescreen looks uh looks good. Yeah, because it cause it compensates, you know. Watch, watch, do it real quick. See, yeah, even your could. even even yours right now, because it's smaller than it was, your 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 visuals look even a little better right now, you mm. know. And, and what's real good is if you get dope with it, which I'm trying to get better at little by little, it's like you can actually manipulate it while you're doing the show. Yeah, if I'm, yeah. If I'm, if I'm talking more, you can zoom me in. If you're talking more, zoom you in. You know what I mean? So yeah. stream, stream, StreamYard's pretty dope, bro. And It's pretty sweet. It, it It is, but it's the only one I found that can go this smooth with what you're doing right now. From your yeah. phone, you know, it doesn't matter if you have great Wi-Fi, you know, everything else like uh, uh obs that shit that people talk about sometimes uh stream labs obs that's another one people talk about that one that one is dope if you have like a super computer and everything's like b because Streamyard, you're on the internet right so you're encased on the cloud you're, you're protected by their servers yeah whereas if you're using a lot of those other ones you're going from your computer to a server than to YouTube or to Facebook or wherever you're going. So mm -hmm. then like, it's just more steps and it ends up being more, you know, more risky as far as like, you know, quality and glitches and yeah, you know, all yeah. that dumb shit. So what, uh, with your guys podcast, as soon as uh, you guys started like talking the nostalgia and uh, the cabbage patch thing in the eighties, yeah. the riots, they got yeah. me in right away. Uh, one of the shows that I like to listen to is the Jim Norton and San Roberts show. And it's okay. like a Sirius XM show. And they, they talk a lot, a lot about all the nineties, eighties stuff. And uh, yeah. yeah. So I was, and then where you brought up the, uh, my the, my pet, pet monster. monster. And uh, I was shocked that your buddy there didn't know what was he, what he was about. And I remember he had the handcuffs and uh, yeah. when, I was, when I was a kid, I put the handcuffs behind his back and fuck it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like your first, your first practice, like your, uh, Stroke your stroke practice and shit. You know I mean? Yeah, cut a hole in the monster's ass. Yeah, <laughs> Put in the, bro, that 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 like is one of my favorite childhood toys. Like, and I love GI Joe and He Man and all that shit. But yeah. like, it was uh, like I said, was saying to him, man, it's like the first one that was like kind of decent size, right? Especially when you were eight, nine, seven. That shit was big. That shit was like the size of you almost, my pet. Monster. So you can pile drive them and yeah, shit like that. Yeah. yeah, like you, you know, you watching the WWF back in the day. You know, clothesline them, have him pretend to clothesline you and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah man, I mean, like, that was the best part of those yeah. things. Hell yeah! So there's uh, do you remember this? Uh, so shit? I gotta run to the bathroom. Sableish. Fucking Sableish. Sableish. The ropes coming off. Oh my, this robing. Oh my. I remember she was like. uh she was top notch back then. She, I think she was one of the first wrestler girls to do Playboy too at the time. Bro, just think, just think about like, just how fucking sexualized, like we allowed, like they allowed our children. And now, <laughs> now it's like that is there still plus more because the first thing, and I'm all for feminism and women empowerment. I got two daughters. You know what I mean? That's a, it's beautiful. You know what I mean? But the first thing ironically that women did <laughs> like one of the first things is like oh your motherfuckers used us for our bodies for so long and we hated it i can't believe you did that to us and also by the way we're gonna do it times 10 now yeah yeah you know, but we're gonna own it and i respect that they should have more ownership over it than any man of course but it's like you would think maybe like you know you know maybe you don't want to do what you said was bad 
You know, <laughs> like, and then you got that OnlyFans, this, that. But you go on, yeah, yeah. But you go on TikTok lives like one, two a.m., twelve a.m., bro. You ever go near that shit, bro? No, I don't really go on TikTok lives, but I'm actually, I can't yeah. be the only guy that's tired of it. But it's, it's just. I've seen enough tits and ass. Like, there's if I want to see it, I go to porn. I'll go watch porn if I want to. Right? It's nothing but titties, bro. You That's go, all it is. Yeah. And bro, you go on TikTok lives, bro. Like, it don't even have to be at 10, 11, 12. One. Like, bro, it's like, like the videos are one thing. They're dancing. At least like they're like masking the fucking like with the lives. Like it's just the bitches sitting there with their titties as high up as possible. <laughs> like, eh, woo, ah. You know what I mean? Like, bro. Yeah. And then now add on on top of like, you know, uh, how much gay is in culture now, which is fine. You know, I respect everyone's right to do whatever they want to do. The trans stuff, you know, that getting pushed in our face even more than in the past. And so now we got like, like every layer of sexualization possible kids yeah. are getting blasted with now. Plus access to porn whenever they get Google. And I wish I... Uh... I wish I had grown up during this time, man. We missed out for sure. That that sable, that Playboy sable issue. I had printed out a cop. I printed out like the centerfold off my computer, and yeah. it was on like special slick paper, like magazine yeah. paper. My mom specially ordered. Yeah. And uh, for that, found... <laughs> you was like, "Yo, mom, listen. <laughs> if you don't want me fucking bitches in here, I need this special magazine paper." <laughs> I think she was. <laughs> I think she was. More pissed that I used the paper more than I was like searching through the porn and shit, bro. And you know uh, that paper probably cost, bro. Yeah, that it was special stuff. It was it <laughs> yeah, was yeah. good then, good back paper. Then, back then too, bro. That shit probably cost like three prescri- three years of subscriptions of magazines. Like you know what I mean? Like for for like three folds. <laughs> The uh, the amount of my mom must have spent on those uh, Trojan porn viruses from like Kazaa and. Uh, what was the other one? Cause on LimeWire was another one. Fucking yeah. Every every computer yeah. fucking virus you can get on there. Pirate Bay when you when the torrents came and all that shit too. Then you had the torrent game going. Yeah, you got. So you said yeah. So so I got a few years on you. So when was Sable? What year was she in the uh the wrestling joint? That was probably like ninety five, ninety six, okay. maybe something like that. Yeah. yeah, that was right. I remember her vaguely. That's like right around when like. I slipped out more. Yeah, that right around when I started getting fucking high more, you know, smoking, yeah, taking acid. You know, I wasn't as much on that shit. I was just like, ah, I gotta get fucked up all the time to cover my pain. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then think about it more than ever once I hit thirty five plus a few. The uh, <laughs> the porn was uh, really scarce back then. It was. Uh, I wrote a joke about. It. I used to jerk off to the uh, the diagram on the tampon box. The yeah. chick putting the putting the thing in there, and uh, the scene where Leonardo DiCaprio is painting Rose on the on the couch oh, in Titanic. Of I, course, I burnt the tracking out on the VHS on that from fucking rewatching it so many times. Of course, bro. Uh, oh, take that example banner off. You can make yourself look. Yeah, crazy. how do I do this? How do I take it off now? <laughs> uh, uh, go back. Just uh, go back. Yeah, you go back. There we go. All right, <laughs> I, bro. I, I remember. I remember watching like all those movies back in the day, just for the nude scenes, like uh, yeah, Basic Instinct. Oh, classic, uh, classic. Sliver, Sliver, which was uh, Sharon Stone's other nasty ass movie. You remember Sliver? No, I don't know that one. No, Sliver was actually a pretty fucking good movie, bro. You don't remember that shit? I think it was Tom Berenger. She lived in a in an apartment building, and then uh, it turned out the dude had like cameras where he was watching everybody in the building. No you way. Know? That sounds like a good movie. I definitely didn't see it. For sure yeah, I didn't bro. See it. it was a pretty good movie. Well, I know it was good for then when I was looking for Sharon Stone titties and <laughs> I was 15, you know, 16, whatever I was, you know what I mean? But uh, but I remember it being like, it's a good concept. So, you know, I don't know if it holds up. So we'll see if you watch it. You let me know. Yeah, you know sounds I mean? like a good one. Yeah, let me know if that shit holds up. But yeah, I remember, so- bro, bro you, you would pause, you would fucking just sit there like fucking... Oh my god! But back then they had the scrambled channels too. Like it wasn't a, like it wasn't a joke. You might see a little nipple through yeah. the scramble of the channel. Like yeah, uh, spice, crazy. bro, spice. Mm-hmm. It was called spice. That was the channel, spice. Was it? Yeah, we had yeah. like uh, the Red Shoe Diaries. David Duchovny, I think, was a big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like the like when uh those were all like those were like Skinamax. Remember the Skinamax? Yeah. Shit? You know what I mean? On like showca- the- I think it was showcasing Baby Blues was another one I think too. Yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah, the good old days. Yeah, do you remember the uh, do you remember the water weenies? 
back in the day, not the pool toys, but the water weenies that you like hold in your hand and they slide down your hand. Nah, 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 no, I'll have to, I'll have to send you a picture of it. It's like yeah, a kid's it. toy, but oh, it was the, ori- it was the original fleshlight. Like I was, I would jerk off into this thing. Oh my god! And back then I would use, I put Vaseline in it. Cause everybody would always talk about Vaseline as lube, but yeah. I don't know who started that fucking lie. Cause you get, you can't get that shit off in the shower or oh. fucking nothing. It's totally waterproof. Yeah, that, that's, that's a, that shit's like dick, like dipping your disc, dick in Crisco. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, just like I've done that too. (laughs) Oh man, bro. That shit is straight. Like, oh man, it's impossible to get off. Impossible, bro. But you get something in. It will help you get something in, though. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. On the back end, it's not the most efficient. You know, oh yeah, it's it's fucking nasty. (laughs) Trying to scrape that out of pubes, fucking never ending. Oh man. I remember being a kid and I saw this commercial here. Uh so I had a little sister and I was hoping my sister was gonna buy this thing. This, this three foot Barbie. Bro, I got one. I got one of those. In what my for bed. one of your daughters? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think we, I I feel like we bought it at a yard sale, maybe, or got or somebody gave it to us. You know what yeah. I mean, bro? And I kept it. Like, like I, I'm not sure if I finally threw it out, but I did keep it. A couple of, hold on, my camera's spazzing and it's driving me crazy. Let's go, camera. Get back here. Come on, bitch. Oh, now I just took a picture by mistake. Hold on. <laughs> all, right, all right, there we go. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, yeah, you know what I hate, bro? When you're looking at a camera, like you want to put your hat straight and it's opposite. Oh, man, it's hard. Yeah. I, I got to take my phone out and do it. In a, <laughs> you know I mean? The mirror image. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, uh. But I still have it in the basement. Like we, we should have thrown it out a few years ago, but I kept it strictly in case I could use it for like a skit or something. Funny. Yeah. Like, like I think like for some Wally stuff, I might like I might like uh <laughs> I might like fucking put it uh put it like just in the background, like not even say nothing about it. You, you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Like don't even talk about it. If somebody mentions it on live, be like, oh, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Some yeah. Like that, because I wouldn't do any like like in depth skits or jokes surrounding it you know what i mean that that's mm-hmm. like that's one area where i don't like you know what i mean like i laugh at jokes about shit like that but i usually don't fuck around with that you know shit along those lines too much you know what i mean yeah I got kids and you know some shit almost went down when i was a kid so i'm like you know I'm a little <laughs> you, you know you know what i'm saying like yeah you know? i was hoping my sister was gonna get this thing for christmas or something so i could drill a hole in it and fuck it or something oh, <laughs> i can imagine bro especially if you were like in that age pocket when that yeah shit you know what yeah. I mean, bro? That's fucking that's that's prime real estate. That's yeah, prime real been estate. Sick. When you're like 12 or some shit. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? You know, ain't nothing wrong with that at that age, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that's just beautiful, fine. <laughs> yeah, it would have been sweet. Oh yeah. So uh what else did I have here? I had something else to talk about here. So yeah, here's a here's a funny story. So we had uh Canada's Wonderland. Do you guys uh do you go to theme parks in your area? Do you have like six flags around your place? I got well. Six Flags ain't too far. We went to um, Sesame Place pretty recently, actually. You know, yeah, there's actually, water park and everything. Yeah, it has a little water park. See, the thing is, <laughs> we went to the zoo, right? All right, we went to the aquarium, and then we were like, because this is like we first were getting out. Like we haven't done shit in the past, like year and change as a family outdoors. Yeah, especially indoors where there's any indoor area, we just play it safe. You know, what I mean, my girl's petrified. Um, you know, kind of careful. And also hate wearing a mask. So I'm like, I'll just, yeah. stay home. I'll just stay home for the most part. You know what I mean? True. But um, so we went to the aquarium. That was dope. Camden Aquarium. That's in uh, in Jersey, right near Philadelphia. Then we were going to go to the Philly Zoo. And then my son, who once he's a pain in the ass, so there's no talking him out of it. Within like 15 minutes of being at the zoo, the sneakers he was wearing were digging into the back of his foot. No. So I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Like We just drove mm-hmm. an hour and a half. You know Shit. I mean? Yeah. So so last resort we went to Sesame Place. That was cool. And then that shit got lightning stormed. And we had to fucking we had to leave there. That shit. Eh? But, but we got four free passes. I kind of like when shit like that happens. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, I pray for shit like that. Like, anybody, <laughs> like my, you ask my girl, bro. Like when shit like that happens, I'm like, ah oh, shit, we're coming back next year for free. You know what I mean? Yeah. You gotta you know? Find the positive in it for sure. Yeah. But but there's yeah, a lot I, of those. There's a lot of those. But but there's not like, like you're saying in Canada, there's like this real specific one. 
Yeah, I think this is pretty well the only one they got is this Canada's Wonderland. And uh, I think in like Winnipeg, they've got the world's biggest mall and they've got a roller coaster within the mall or something. But uh, no Wonderland way. is the big one for Canada. So they got this big wave pool. And uh, so this just fills up with kids and shit, right? And shit. And, uh, <laughs> and shit too. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so when I was uh, like 11 or 12, my parents, they got a, uh, a season's pass for me. Cause like a couple of my other buddies got one too. Yeah. And we were like lower income family. So uh, people, when I tell the story, people are like, well, how, if you guys didn't have money, how'd you get the season's pass? And my parents were thinking ahead. That was like the summer babysitter. So like for 120 yeah, bucks, I'd be getting babysat all summer. Right. Bro, and, broke, uh, pa- broke parents make it happen sometimes. Like being yeah. broke don't mean you never did nothing. It just means it worked you out. did a couple things. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it worked out for everybody. Yeah. So the, the favorite part of Wonderland was, uh, wasn't the rides. It was all like the carnival games you would play, right? Because yeah. the rides were free, but the carnival games weren't. So me and my buddies, we had to make up our own game, like to have some fun there. So in the wave pool, I guess this is more my game than anybody else's. It's kind of a perverted game. Yeah. So I'd be like 11 and I was swimming around and I'd, I'd swim by women and like brush the back of my hand against their ass. And so I count how many touches I got by the end of the day or whatever. And a lot of people, they say like, you know, that's not a game, that's sexual assault. And uh, I'm like, it is, but I was 10 years old, 11, you know, I didn't know any better. Yeah. And then one day we show up to Wonderland and I go in the wave pool and I'm, there's no women in there and I'm, I'm waiting. And all of a sudden there's a, a cloud of pink tank tops, like just swarming to the pool. I start reading the tank tops and it's gay day at Wonderland and uh, got a taste of my own medicine there. And it was uh, salty. Oh, <laughs> and uh, that was the last time I ever played that game. Cause, uh, cause yeah, I got to not to say that all the gay dudes were like trying to, trying to touch me or nothing, but That's there was gay, stuff. gay adults in there touching kids asses. And they must've looked at me and my buddy, like we were fresh meat or we were yeah. closet kids and we were, it was finally gay day and we could come out and be ourselves. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a fucking weird day, man. <laughs> I mean, gay dudes are men, you know. Yeah. So, so yeah. A certain a certain percentage of them, just like men, are gonna be disgusting. <laughs> They'll That's shoot the men. shot. As men, bro, we're fucking we're gross. We, women gotta understand, like, there's some dudes that are predators, right? And they're just bad people, and they're horrible humans, and they should be fucking murdered and maimed and fuck them. You know what I mean? But men in general. We cannot control that horniness, it, especially if like <laughs> you know, the errors we came up in, bro. It was like be horny, be horny, be horny. Like everything was like, bro. I remember watching Butt Bongo Fiesta from Howard. <laughs> All right, yeah, six, seven, eight years old, bro. Nine years old, whatever the fuck I was, bro. You know, maybe- he was on Fox, right? Saturday nights at midnight. Is that when he was on? He was, but then he put out this VHS. You never heard of that? How? No, Stern? no. Oh no. yeah. Yeah, I, I'm gonna play that and play clips from it on pocket. Yeah, Howard Stern. It was called Howard's. Look it up. Howard Stern's Butt Bongo Fiesta. When we get off, check that shit out. He put yeah, out like a, okay. VH, a VHS, like you know, right to VHS tape called Howard Stern's Butt Bongo Fiesta, bro. Nothing but titties and this and that. I mean, bro, we were like, you're trained. We're trained in that way. You yeah. Know? And it's not getting better. <laughs> it's not getting better. Like back then they were training us to like, you know, be horny towards women and men and women. Now they're just like, hey, fuck everything. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, fuck each other. Fuck this one. Yeah. Why don't true. You two fuck that one. Hey, yeah. why don't you be a girl today and fuck that one? <laughs> you know what I mean? They're even trying to they're even trying to normalize uh like Nambla, like the do you know Nambla, the North American Man Boy Love Association? <laughs> like the pedophile group yeah it's a real thing they're a real group right, they send out newsletters to the pedophiles in jail and shit and uh jesus christ bro Where but is i guess thing? they're i don't know it's i guess it's in the states and uh they're talking about eight i guess it's called ageism so that like your love doesn't have an age or a number or whatever there was a really popular video of a like of a young woman making a speech at a conference about it and uh the video blew up and people were talking about how fucked up it was Hold on, hold on. Let me shut off this fucking. I don't even know why I got it on law. Yeah, wake up. It's fucking ten thirty. I probably said it for ten thirty a.m. one day, like a moron. Oh, I done that yeah. too. Yeah. You know what I mean? But damn, now nah, I never heard of that shit specifically. To be honest with you. But, yeah, if you look it up, Nambla, and it's like they've been hiding behind um, what do you call it? Gay. Uh, I can't think of what it is. 
like the gay movement, them coming out, they're kind of like hiding behind them, trying to get in this, this Nambla, this pedophile group, like they'll march, they march in the gay pride things, but all the GTQ, uh, all those guys, they don't want any part of them, right? Like they'll say during the pride parade, they'll say, they'll keep these people away. They're not part of us. They're not part of this and whatever. Is it mainly dudes like advocating hunting dudes or dudes and females and all of it? Uh, I think it's more or less guys doing it. Like there's a a, a wicked no, documentary. But guys going after only other guys or going, no, after, going after kids, yeah. You're going after kids. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Not, nothing acceptable whatsoever. Nah. So there's a really good documentary called chicken Hawk and it, uh, it's got this main character is a member of the society and, uh, they follow him around and he's just completely delusional. Like they'll film him having conversations just in public with kids. And then he'll come back. Like you'll, you'll listen to the conversation and you're like, this guy's a fucking creep. And like the kid wants nothing to do with him. He'll come back and he'll tell, you know, what he got from the conversation being like, this kid is, you know, I could tell from the, the vibes that he was giving me that he wanted to experiment and all this oh, shit. Yeah. And uh, right, it's just kids. We're, we're twisted. Kids, kids too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah kids. Yeah, it was fucked up, man. What the fuck is going on? You know, it, it, but but I'll say this, though, bro. It kind of goes both ways, though, right? No pun intended. Like, it's like, it's like, now you have, like, a small group of wackos normalizing it, right? Mm -hmm. But what's worse, a small group of wackos normalizing it or it literally being normalized under the radar for the last fucking bro <laughs> it, it's so crazy to think that we didn't even start looking at this shit crazy until like i don't know 60s 70s yeah, think, you know so i thought it was uh you know it's like the catholic churches are big on it like a lot of shit going on there but it's uh the synagogues do it too like check uh check this thing out here in a practice known as Metsitsa Bepe, or just MBP, the Moyle Fucking actually vampires. uses his mouth to suck the blood from the infant's penis after he cuts off the foreskin. <laughs> Meant to prevent infection and serve as a celebration of life, News 12 has learned the little-known practice has turned into a curse for life for some babies involved in our area. And it's all because of a local rabbi who's alleged to have a sexually transmitted disease. <laughs> These fucking and vampires, he, man. And he, ha and he has an STD to top it off. Like, and it's yeah. all because, like, that, like, how the fuck is that even? Like, I don't give a fuck if he got an STD. I can't think he's. <laughs> you know what Dude, I you're mean? You're in like, a, like, like, a packed synagogue, like a synagogue full of people, and nobody has a problem with it. So I wrote a bit about it, like, that, uh, you know, vampires are real. They're just not yeah. sexy, like, on TV. They're. 60 year old rabbi sucking the blood off a baby's dick and in front of a bunch of people nobody's saying anything but the sad part is the baby the baby doesn't get the vampire powers he just gets herpes and some of them end up dying because they can't fight the virus that's perfect Bill, based fucking, on that story too that's fucking perfect bro it's twisted here there's no, a little there's a, go ahead like, good you know it, it, but i just can't get over the fact that they add the std thing at the end it's like yeah. if you're not worried about your baby's <laughs> being sucked get this he has herpes like, oh, yeah. now we must stop him. The what icing the on the cake. Can we focus on the baby dick sucking? Like, whoa, whoa. Who gives a fuck if we got herpes, man? Like, that's weird. Here, there's, a, there's a part two to this thing here. ...of Muncie has been tied to at least this three the, herpes the infections guy. in babies, one of whom died back in 2004. Shortly after the tragic death, Rabbi Fisher was forbidden from practicing NBP in New York. But despite this state-issued ban, one concerned mother tells us the NBP. infected moil <laughs> is still placing innocent lives at risk. That's a fucked bro, up acronym, eh? <laughs> bro, bro, but, but, but time out. The bit, but this is what I'm trying to understand. <laughs> Herpes is deadly now? Like, I'm just trying to understand that part of it. Too. It's deadly, it's, it's and then deadly the baby for it. died. From it's, herpes. It's like, for the it's it's deadly for the infant because they don't have the uh they can't fight the virus, right? Their body's not ready to fight the virus. That's why. That's so there's something mean. like twelve Jesus deaths, twelve deaths in the last maybe decade or two from it. And I think it's mainly New York and it's like the super orthodox Jews or ultra orthodox or whatever. Wait, all all herpes deaths, you mean? Or you mean herpes deaths related to the fucking 
Big sucking <laughs> rabbi. Just, that, just the babies. Yeah, just the babies. Like that could be rooted back to that rabbi? Yeah. Oh, no, no. Sorry. He's only oh. four. They've only got one dead baby that they've linked to him. Yeah. Christ, man. Yeah. What the fuck goes on in this world, man? Yeah. Are you uh, religious? Did you ever go to church when you were growing up? Uh, I mean, I, I did like communion and confirmation. Technically, I'm, uh, you know, I'm Catholic. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. But, you know, I never I haven't been like I haven't been like really right around the acid times. Once again, I think a lot of times, <laughs> a lot of shit relates back to that time in my life. And yeah, that's, what, that's when I went on more of like a, you know, mental journey of like, you know, like I, I remember reading like fucking Carl Sagan's Cosmos around that time. And then like, uh, you know, Killer Priest. I know the name. His first a album, rapper, right? Yeah. His yeah. first album called Heavy Mental. Right. Killer Priest isn't top 20, 50 when it comes down to like just him as an artist. Mm-hmm. But Heavy Mental, the album that's in my top five albums, if not my favorite album ever made, like yeah. super deep album, you know? So, so at that point in my life, I was just on that real, like, you know, like I started, I started, you know, I, I still kind of like, I, I'm settled more nowadays on more of a spiritual, like I'm definitely spiritual to some degree. I definitely talk yeah. to the skies sometimes. I definitely uh, believe in a lot of the teachings of Buddhism, but I'm not a Buddhist, but I believe in like, you know, Buddhism is more based on, uh, you know, knowledge of self, knowing self. Are these like philosophies, types of philosophies? Yeah, thing? you know, yeah. it's big on self. It's big on self. It's big on uh, being present, right? So like, so like, if you're angry, it's okay to be angry. You know what I mean? You could be like, I'm angry as fuck right now. It's okay. Mm. That's going to pass. I'm sad as fuck right now. It's okay. That's good. I'm happy as fuck right now. It's going to pass. Like, don't, don't dive into any emotion whether it's good or bad, don't dive into it and, yeah. and, and use it as a blanket or fight it. You know, it, you know, it, it, that, that's one thing, man. Buddhism, man, like when I started reading the teachings of it, I'm like, oh, I'm like, they, these motherfuckers are on to something, you know, yeah. but get the religion, you know, oh, Buddha's the God and all that. I'm not saying all that, you know what I mean? I don't just, e- e- listen. Here's the thing. Either one of these motherfuckers are right. None of these motherfuckers are right, or they're all talking about the same God and just gave them a different story. Yeah, there's too many of them. Like, there's uh, for thousands of years, millions of people dying over who's like I refer to it as who has the better comic book and whose main character is better, like whose superhero was better, kind of yeah. thing. I agree. So, Buddhism, you'll never see a Buddhist doing uh, crazy shit like this. Then, I guess. <laughs> fuck is going on <laughs> what, 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 what uh what cult i mean religion did they assign to uh that was some kind of muslim thing like i put in muslim muslim rituals and that's what came up to it i seen india on the bottom now i wondered them I wonder yeah them. yeah maybe it's some some type of sharia law some of that crazy shit mixed in there maybe it is, man. you know but listen that's the thing right you know everyone evolves at a different speed right so, like, as much as I hold people responsible that still, because of their beliefs, mistreat women or children or this or that, you also got to consider, like, when you grow up only in that, what else do you know? Yeah, like, this is how it used to be in, uh, like, the 60s right here. Then during lunch, Ralph showed him some pornographic pictures. Jimmy knew he shouldn't be interested. <laughs> But well, he was curious. Jimmy hadn't enjoyed himself so much in a long time. What Jimmy didn't know was that Ralph was sick. A sickness that was not visible like smallpox, but no less dangerous and contagious. A sickness of the mind. You see, Ralph was a homosexual. A person who demands a relationship with members of their own sex. Sickness of the mind. Like smallpox. <laughs> Bro, like, like, just to imagine, right? Like, I'm not into it. You know what I mean? I never did no gay shit. You know what I mean? But like, never, you, you never had any like borderline gay uh, things. Grade school before grade school as a kid? Nah, nah. I'm gonna be honest. The gayest. Shit, I'll tell you, bro. My first blowjob. Oh god. My first blowjob. <laughs> me and my childhood like best friend buddy. 
we were hanging out in his little crawl space in his basement and we came across his dad's like porno magazines. Oh God. So we're flipping through the magazines and uh, like our little kid hormones going crazy. And we negotiate this deal. Like we'll do, we're going to trade three sucks each. So just like, 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 it's like, like three sucks, right? So I, fucking, so I get my three sucks first. Cause I'm quick like that. And this kid pulls his dick down and pulls his dick out and it's uh, uncircumcised. And I'd never seen that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it scared the shit out of me. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, I hear somebody upstairs. I hear somebody upstairs. And then I ran out of the crawl space and ran home. Dude. Stole the sucks and ran. You played him, bro. He, he, was, <laughs> he was sitting there with his little mini glow worm. You know were like, you, you like, I'm out of here, man. God damn. He probably talks about you to this day, bro. He's probably like, he's probably like, <laughs> I do talk to him a bit now. He's, he's seen like my stand up and stuff, but I have never, I haven't displayed this joke for him yet, though. Fucking guy. This guy made me suck his dick. He told me he was going to reciprocate, bro. He is. <laughs> oh, man, bro. Nah, nah. I never had, I never had no shit like that. The, the, the only gay shit I could even think about is a little bit. It's like, but it's not really gay. It's just boy shit. Like you sleep over your boy's house and like, you both have like that morning boner, like, hey, bro, whoa, whoa, look at this. You know <laughs> yeah. I mean? like, not showing each other, just like where the blanket's rising a little bit. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and you're like, oh, it's, oh, it's, oh, it's a, there's a, a difference between funny and gay. The line is pretty thin, but yeah, there's yeah, a line yeah, there. Yeah. 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 No, no, I never, uh, honestly, bro, like it, it, it was, hold on, this fucking camera. Come on, bitch. Uh, here's, here's a picture for you. <laughs> but, uh, fucking, uh, it, it, it like by my parents, right, and like my people around me, like it was it was pretty goddamn demonized. You know what I mean? So, oh yeah, yeah. You know, so, so even if like, even if like I'm at listen, it's like that. You ever see Brody Stevens on fucking Joe Rogan that time years ago talking about? And this is when I found out I was forty percent gay. And no, like, I didn't see that, bro. It is one of you got to look for that shit, bro. It is hilarious, bro. He talks about like he's in Thailand. And this and that, and he's like, and he's like, and this is what I found out. I was sixty percent. Like, I think, I think he kept going up throughout the, you know, throughout the story. If I remember, yeah, I might, I might be tagging that. I might be adding that on. But it sounds like a good bit, yeah, bro. Hilarious, bro. And I think mm. it's a hundred percent true story. But I think, I think, like, listen, I think anybody who doesn't acknowledge that at some point in their life had some gay thought or gay fucking, like, I think you're lying. You know what I mean? I don't think yeah. it's possible. I think it just happens. You know what I mean? But I don't know, man, like it was so demonized for me, especially young that I don't, it's just like, for me, it's like, it's just there's lines. Right. And yeah. as much as I support gay people, like I'm super supportive of that type of shit, 1 million percent, but it's still like one of those <clears throat> lines. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's just certain lines that no matter what gun to my head, no matter what you do, I, I just couldn't cross them. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like gun to my head, head, gun to my head. I could, but uh, yeah, I, didn't think <laughs> I could, bro. Like that. That's how. Like that's how it is for me. Like there's there's certain things. Like there's like a few of those lines in life that are just like no, you, these lines are never crossable under any circumstance. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'd Chris probably Rock. die. I'd probably die. I I would probably. You think so, die. hey? I think so, bro. I really do. And, and Chris it's Rock. Like, uh, go ahead. Man. It's stupid. It really is stupid if you think about it. Like a lot of it mm. is. Just my programming. You know what I mean? Like my, my racist programming went away. You know what I mean? Like I caught some racism programming from parents or uncles or this or that for sure. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. The town I lived in when I was young, you know, I lived in a very white town young and then in urban neighborhoods as I got older, you know, like in between teens and shit. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, th I think, I think I might be dead. I yeah. I'm you dead. catch a, a serious spanking and shit for that one. Okay. Where you guys were talking about on your on one of those episodes there about spanking and uh, did you ever get the speech? Did you ever get a speech before the spanking? My dad would always say, uh, "This is going to hurt me more than it hurts you." Oh, I never heard that. There was one time that I actually said he must have taken it easy on me because I'm like that didn't hurt, and then it and then it did hurt because then there was another round and it fucking hurt. <laughs> yeah. See, I got a little lucky, I think. Right. It depends though, because my dad was kind of a puss in a way, but my mom was the abuser. Right. Yeah. But it might have been better if my dad was because I feel like like men have a very good grasp on their strength for the most part. So, you know, exactly what you're given. You know, if you're given <laughs> that belt, you know, the exact twap. You know, what I mean, like if I if I give my son a little play around body shot, it's not gonna be the same as I give a man. Or if I play around my daughter and like tap her on the head or something, she's going to get so much lighter, you know, so 
I feel like a man beater, unless they're just like loving it and they're sadistic, <laughs> it's more calculated, you know? Mm. Whereas my mother, bro, oh my God. It got to a point where it didn't hurt anymore, for sure. Yeah. But bro, I got to hit his chair, bro. Yeah, my chair's squeaking too, so don't worry about it. <laughs> it's been driving me crazy, bro, for the podcast. I'm like, bro, I gotta sit in the chair and like, like use my calves to like keep the chair from moving. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, bro, leg gains, like just to keep the shit. <laughs> but, yeah, mine's creaking bad too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, but my mom, bro, it was just like psychopath beatings. You know what I mean? Like when my mom beat me, bro, it was everything and anything. Two yeah. liters, like, you know, like, <laughs> like half full two liters. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> full That's full funny. Bro, anything you could imagine, bro. I, I got fucking, I got whooped by my mom, bro. And there's two stories. So my mom would usually uh, rinse my mouth out with soap. Oh, yeah. And she hit yeah. me with a spoon. She, like, she broke a wooden spoon. I remember she told me about one spanking when I was really young. Like, normally she would hold my shoulder and then fucking whack me, right? But one day she didn't grab onto me. She just went for the whack and smacked me across the room, I guess was the story she told me. Yeah. But uh, she wasn't shy for, uh, for giving the spankings either. She would, She never bailed me out. My dad was always the one to show up and bail me out of jail. But yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. different dynamic from each side. Yeah. yeah, my mom was a piece of shit. You know what I mean? For the most part. Like, I don't talk to either of my parents. I haven't talked to my pop since like 2012. And that was a random... <laughs> a random bus stop encounter. Really? Me and my girl. Yeah, me and me and my <laughs> me and my girl were driving by the girl I'm with now, bro. I'm sweating like a fucking pig. <laughs> I told you about all them lights, bro. Yeah, I guess so, eh? Woo, shit, bro. I have to put my AC on for sure when I go in here. Oh man. But uh what was I saying? Mom Dukes, piece of shit, pop dude. Yeah, all right. So yeah, we we were driving by the bus. And I see him at the bus stop. And I'm like, I'm like, what's up? Right, and he's like, he literally did. He didn't know who I was. He really, was like, eh? Jeez. He's like, uh, uh. And he's like, "Who's that? Who's that?" And I'm like, "It's your son, you fucking mess." <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, "Oh, Cliff, what's up, man? Uh, you know what I mean?" And then we pulled away after my girl was like, "We could have gave him a ride." I'm like, "No, we couldn't have." <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, "Fuck that, but you know what it is." And it's not because of his relationship with me. Like that's whatever at this point. I, you know what I mean? Like I, my relationship with my father like crumbled for the most part by like probably like 15 it was crumbled crumbled you know what i mean like no repair probably unless he yeah. was accountable you know for who he was and mm -hmm. the main thing is once my i have i have three kids right so my oldest is uh is 21 right 2001 no my oldest is 20 and yeah. i got i got a nine and a, uh nine and an eight and he just never took enough interest in her life my oldest and he never met them like he could have made up for it because he wasn't like a bad father he was just a drug addict, wasn't there as much as he should have been, but was still fairly present. Yeah. Whereas my mom was present, but a total fucking nutbag, psycho fucking, you know what I mean, bro? Like, just, just bad, bro. Bad fucking news. You know what I mean? Like, the woman is yeah. just bad fucking news. So, like, her, her, it would be impossible to repair because she's impossible for accountability. You know, yeah. she'll never take accountability for the abuse and the issues. So it's like, if you did me wrong and you give me an apology, you can repair almost anything with me. It's the type of dude I am. You know, you come yeah. correct. We have conversation. There's nothing we can't talk about. I'm very easy to, to work things out with if you come with the right, you know, the right approach. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that bitch, man, she just got none, no, no accountability. Like, she'll show a little accountability. Like, I try every once in a while. Last time I tried with her was probably like six years ago, seven years ago. You know, yeah. I try, and I should just say some other dumb shit, or do some other dumb shit, or say some dumb shit to my girl. You know, like well, I'm just like, right, you know what, bitch, we good. You know. Yeah, that's too bad. Pops, but I mean, if it's, if it's easier that way, right now. Oh, listen, bro, I, I've been out on my own since I'm since I'm 16, going on 17. You know, so so I've lived more of my life like with zero, you know, parental guidance or, you know. Uh, relationship than I have, you know, with it. So, for me, it's whatever, bro. It's it, it, it's legitimately obviously when it comes to my kids, it'd be nice for them if they had mm -hmm. their grandpa, you know, because now they don't have a grandparent from my side at all. Which yeah, is kinda, you know that that part is whack. But as far as me, bro, man, fuck that. I I got, bro. Listen, bro. If you're not a positive influence on my life, I don't give a fuck who you are. You won't be in my life. 
Yeah, it's not worth the time or the energy, yeah, right? Bro, even my kids, bro. If my kids get older and they're dickheads, I'll be like, <laughs> yo, call me back when you're not a dickhead anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I don't need the stress. I've been through too much of my life to deal with your bullshit. <laughs> you know you know what I mean? So fuck all yeah. that shit. My, uh, my relationship with my parents was uh, was good, I guess. It's like every there was like a thing like every seven years i would kind of fall in and fall out because like uh you know i'd be a, a heavy drug user or just or just fucking around and uh, i was a piece of shit as a kid too like lying and fucking lighting fires all the time and destroying super really destructive just for no reason destroying shit yeah. I remember my dad always had a bunch of shotguns that he'd keep in the closet and my mom would always catch me playing with them and uh, she got she made him get rid of all the guns because I got caught pointing them out the window at somebody on the road or whatever. And, Jesus Christ. Uh, I wrote a bit about how they, they took me to see a therapist and they're like, oh, he's on the spectrum. And they're like, oh, no, autism. And then the guy's like, no, not autism. Uh, the McDonald Triangle, where it's the they find out if you're going to be a serial killer or not. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> fucking, yeah, man. But really fucked up as a kid. I remember my parents should have probably split up like a lot earlier. They didn't break up until I was like maybe 20, something like that. Okay. But they stayed together basically just for uh, for myself and my sister. I remember always writing notes like, if you guys break up, I'm running away and fucking yeah, yeah, child, yeah. childish shit like that. So I wonder if they had a split up earlier, would it, would it have had a worse impact on me coming up or uh, all right or no? Yeah. yeah Every right? family dynamic's different, right? Yeah, it's hard, it's, hard, it's, hard to, it's hard to say. You know what I mean? It's hard to say, man. I, mm-hmm. I look at it like this, man. You know, it's... uh. Your past is your past. Your history is your history. You know what I mean? We 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 all been through shit. Everyone got a story. Yeah. You know, I, I just my thing is, man. I just I just always try to like. I'm telling you, bro. Like that Buddhist shit really changed how I looked at a lot of shit. You know what I mean? Not the religion part of it, but mm-hmm. just that that thing where it's like don't dive into like you should never dive into anything. Because if yeah. you die, like, let's say you're like, you get happy and then you're like, I'm so happy. You know, like, this is <laughs> awesome. I'm happy every day. You know what I mean? Then if the littlest thing happens, it's going to feel like the biggest thing because you're not counterbalancing yeah. that emotion. You know what I mean? I remember when I went through drug treatment uh, and then I, so in this, like I did like a day treatment program, you were like, you're not locked in rehab. You go there nine yeah. to five and uh, you got to be clean to be in there. Yeah. But uh, they break down all the shit, like uh, just the emotional triggers, and uh, they they made it made sense of like beating the cravings and what's being hungry or angry, lonely, tired, the different emotions that'll lead to you, you know, wanting to relapse and shit like that. So then I started going to like Narcotics Anonymous and AA, and um, so that was it. Turned it like at first it was good, and then it turned into like that culty kind of religious thing that people talk about. And I had a hard time differentiating it from religion. And uh, they say, you know, it's not religious, but you're in the basement of a church and you're paying rent to the church to be there. And yeah. they have a lot of slogans like one day at a time. But then you get a chip like but then you're counting on your chips that you get for being a month sober and fucking yeah. a lot of hip- hypocrisy in it. But really, the steps are just to everyday life like they can be applied to anybody in anything. Sure. Just like the, those parts of religions that are like the positive parts, the put, you know, the positive mental thinking and uh, yeah, like Actually, there's extremists on every side, right? There's extremists for everything on every side too. I mean, that's the problem. Like, 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 like that's the problem with what you just discussed with AA or anything else. It's like humans don't know how most humans, <clears throat> most humans don't know how to like, just like see things from different angles, man. It's like pe- people, whatever they decide, it's like, this is what I decide. Like iPhones are the fucking best, man. Fuck <laughs> your Android, bro. Fuck mm-hmm. your Android. You know what I mean? Like Beats headphones, bro, or nothing else. You know, it's like, it's like, what the fuck? Like just, you know, that's the thing. And that's why I don't throw the baby out with the bathwater with religion, right? I'm not religious, but I understand the impact it could have on somebody that's lost maybe. Yeah. Or somebody that needs those teachings to like be good in life. They need to think, Okay, if I'm good in this life, I, I, I'll be good in the afterlife. So they live a better life because of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's the problem. It's like, you know, like if somebody's an atheist, be a fucking atheist. But then you don't got to be like, fuck your religion, you know? <laughs> you know? Yeah. You yeah. Know? Or, 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 but unfortunately, it happens. And, you know, it happens more on the religious side, if anything, if we're honest. You know, religious yeah. people are more judgmental than any 
group possibly. You know what I mean? Like if you're really Muslim or Christian or Judaism or whatever it is, people that are really in it like that, they like a lot of them look, they look down their nose at you, unfortunately. Like you're supposed to be the the compassion, the empathy. Yeah, really. You yeah. know, same thing with woke it's... culture. Look at woke culture. It's the same thing. Woke culture comes from a good place, right? The root of, yeah. of woke, woke culture is end racism, women's rights. Get treated right for being different. No matter who you are, you should get fair treatment, equal opportunity, da, 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 all that. Fully agree with all that shit. You know what I mean? I definitely agree that that's how life should be. But it, it's to the point now where it's like, but if you don't agree with everything we say, you're done. You're fucking done. Like, like why? Like, what? I thought you were the righteous ones. Yeah. Now it's almost like you can't even you can't even have a racial conversation without uh, like appearing racist. Like you can't have an honest racial conversation. You can't talk statistics or anything like that or without being yeah. viewed racist. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Uh, I, I was talking to um, what the hell was it? Oh, somebody had the video posted. I might touch on this on a podcast too with us, but somebody who, who they posted a video. Did you see the veteran in Miami who like went nuts? I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, so. He was in Miami, a veteran, like when it looked like a pretty young guy, you know, I'd say, I don't know, a little younger than us, maybe, you know, or in our pocket, but still looked fairly young. I couldn't really tell, but he was flipping out at the, at, at the, uh, uh, fl flipping out at the airport. Right. And going nuts. And at one point he's like throwing shit. He's saying, ah, oh, yo, let's go. My, and he's saying the N word, but the G a, not the yeah. ER, you know, more like, mm -hmm. more like he might be a hood white boy. That just uses the word at times. You know what I mean? Are you talking about the Burger King guy or somebody else? No, no. This was this was at the Miami airport, right? Okay. So somebody posted it. And number one, they insinuated it was about masks, right? So I seen the video. They insinuated it was about masks. I immediately looked up the story because that's what I do when I see shit. I don't just go, oh, yeah. that's what you said it is? Must be that. No, I mm -hmm. go, okay, you're saying it's that. Let me check it out. So I look into it within fucking 45 seconds as usual. You find out the truth, which is it was a military veteran having an episode. He was fighting yeah. with his girlfriend in the bathroom. <clears throat> and they told him he couldn't get on the flight. And then he started, you know, try starting a fight with the guy. So I said, no, I went on the post. I said, number one, it wasn't about masks. So you should take that away right away because that's misleading. You shouldn't do that. You know, I'm all for if somebody's being a dick that won't wear a mask for a little while. You, you, you're probably a jerk off. At least put it on, <laughs> and, you know, sneak it off here and there. Do what you got to do. Don't be a piece of shit. Right. That's yeah. my that's my opinion on it. You know, I don't like them, but I put them on sometimes just to be cordial. You know, yeah. I go. I can, I can put it on for two minutes and it's not going to kill me. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you want me to put it on fucking and not take it off the entire flight with a gun to my head? Yeah. That, then maybe we're going to have a fucking, you know, a fight. But they made it seem like it was about the mask. And then they also said it was racist. Somebody in the comment section. I said, okay, hold up, pump the brakes. Said, first of all, it wasn't about the mask. It takes 20 seconds to find that out. I said, yeah. second of all, it's clear that he's saying it in the GA way. I am not saying it's okay for a white person to say it in that way, right? But let's draw the distinction that he wasn't a white guy yelling at a black person, calling him an ER with racial tone. That's not <sighs> what's happening. Mm -hmm. Oh, then the person, it's always racist if a white person said it says it. I, I was like, are you out of here? I'm like, I grew up in New York in the 90s. I was in every hood in New York saying G, the N-word with the GA yeah. for years. Right? And I don't do it anymore. I don't say it anymore. I had some like older black dudes like kind of knowledge me <laughs> on it. Not, not in an yeah. aggressive way. I had a couple people get aggressive once or twice and then I was like, alright, what's up then? Oh, nah. Ah, whatever. You know, but I had an older head be like, listen, I encourage the young black kids in the neighborhood not to use that word. You could do what you want. I know you're not saying it in a racist way, but consider that I tell my own people in my own hood not to use it. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? And, and like from then on, I tried deleting it from the vocabulary. But the thing is, if you hang out, and that's what I told them on a post, I said, it, I said, go hang out with a bunch of white boys and try not to say bro. I dare you. <laughs> you're going to say bro. Bro is going to become, if you hang out with black and Spanish people in the hood, and, it, and you, all you do is hear it every fucking 15 words. <laughs> it ends up becoming part of your vocabulary, whether you like it or not. So don't pretend like everyone who says G.A., the N-word, is like a white supremacist. Like that takes away from actual racists being 
Yeah. Checked. Yeah. Good, good point. Yeah. You know what I mean? The twisted I used, dude. The twisted I, I used the word a lot when I was a kid, but it was only around my white friends. <laughs> I wasn't yeah, saying it yeah. around any black yeah, kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, bro, I'll tell you, bro, I was in the hood, bro. Smack in the middle of the Bronx, only white boy for hundreds of miles. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And I had a couple people, don't get me wrong, did I have a couple dudes like, nah, bro, I don't play that shit. Don't say that shit in front of me. And I'm yeah. like, I, I'm like, I'll do my best, but also don't be disrespectful. <laughs> you know what mm -hmm. I mean? All right, man, whatever. You know what I mean? But, yeah. you know, I, I tell you what, I heard ER in the white neighborhood I grew up in more than I ever heard black dudes talking about crackers. You know, like in, in like a real racial evil way. You yeah. know what I mean? So did, did you ever have a do you ever any anybody ever call you like a culture vulture or anything like that? Definitely, like I said, the wigger thing was big. You know what I mean? Cause cause mind mm. you, like like I like there's a reason the show's called the original wiggers. Like we like we're that group of people. You know what I mean? Like we were the first group of people when all the TV shows came out and you know, fucking uh, uh, Bud Bundy was on uh, Married with I've been, Children. I've been Grand watching Master. the Bundys all weekend, bro. <laughs> the, my opinion, the best sitcom, comedy sitcom, arguably. It's right there with like All in the Family and, you know, like the, 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 the Married with Children is fucking amazing. That show is classic. Yeah. And it holds up. It holds up to this yeah. day. You watch that show today. It's still hilarious, bro. Yeah, my mom would go to bed, or I would go to bed, and then after my mom would go to bed, my dad would come up and wake me up, and or I would stay up, and then I'd come down and watch Married with Children with them before, like before going back yeah, to bed. Yeah, yeah me too. Wicked me, show. Me too. Super problematic that our parent, that our dads let us watch that. By the way, but <laughs> yeah. but, but 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 a fucking amazing. I'm so much more strict with my kids, bro. There's there's so many shows, there's so many shows that um I want to watch with my son. Or I want to watch my daughter, and I'm not. I won't even let him watch it today. Like 13, 14, probably. Yeah. Uh, there's so much more shit. Like even on Netflix, there's so much tits and stuff on there that, uh, like when we were kids, there was no way to find that stuff. There was no. HBO. You know, it was, it was hard. Yeah, like this. You got to pay for it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Or or not. Taxi Cab Confessions. Yeah, Taxi Cab. That was a yeah. good one too. You get girls. Uh uh uh. What's that other shit? Real sex. Real Sex. Remember they had HBO Real Sex Volume 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? Uh, that it, sounds familiar. Yeah, if you look it up, bro, bro I'll definitely be pulling some sh shit on, on the uh, podcast at some point, and you should do the same on yours. Cause Playboy uh, Playboy TV had a good prank show, yeah. and it was called Totally Busted. I remember and uh, <laughs> they just set up random dudes with hot naked chicks and, you know, the yeah. girl just to see if they'll do it or not and shit. That was a good show, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was it? There, there was like random stuff, you know what I mean? There was random stuff, but now, bro, everything is just. But I'll tell you this though, like there's good and bad things about woke culture, right? Because it's definitely helped to make sure. Like, there's a lot of shows that like are a, a lot less provocative. O on the overall, shows are less adult than when we were young. Because the the shows that were like considered not adult. If you go back and watch them now, like you wouldn't see that shit in the kids' movies now. You know what I mean? Like, like I I, I watched Mon Monster Squad the other day. Remember Monster Squad, bro? Uh, no, I don't. Is this a, is there a remake of it now though? There might have been. There might have been. This is arguably right. It's like Goonies, but like Dracula. It's like a monster movie where it's Dracula, Wolfman, the Mummy. Like it's yeah, like okay, Frank okay. Frankenstein. I think it came out yeah. in 1985 or six. I remember oh, Chappelle. Yeah. Dave Chappelle did like a spoof of it on the Chappelle show thing. Yeah, yeah, that might, yeah, it might have been relative to that. But, but ten minutes, I'm sitting there watching it with my kids, right? Thinking, oh, mm -hmm. it's like some, you know, we'll be all right. And then, bro, ten minutes in, fucking, <laughs> the kid starts beating up the other kid and calling them f bombs left and right, <laughs> like the gay, you know, the gay. Oh, you yeah. little f. What are you gonna do, you little f? Come here, you little f, bro. Like, like three, four times in a row, you know. But it ended decent because then the older kid popped up and was like, "Hey," you know, and then it was like, "Hey," ah, you know. So like, at least the bully got checked. Yeah, yeah. But that was after three hard <laughs> Bob Saggots rhymes with Saget f. Yeah, you know what I mean? Hard, bro. Hard. So how do you how do you feel about the R word? Is that uh, is that a touchy thing for you or no? I, I personally, I don't think any word is touchy. Yeah, I think, the, I think the only touchy word 
legitimately because of the history of America is the N word. That's the only word that I think should be avoided, especially in the ER way. Yeah. For the most part. You know what I mean? They like, shouldn't give word. there shouldn't be so much power in a word. Like a word shouldn't yeah. have that much power control. No. No. So I no. came across this old video. Uh, so before they were called, I guess, retards, they were called trainables. And this was uh, one trainables. of these old, a PSA here for the trainables. Hey, Frank, how come you haven't gotten up yet? I'm waiting sticky. Oh, what, uh, <laughs> when did that happen? Did it happen during the night? Or did it just happen now? Do you know? No. no. Well, if you're sticky, maybe it was a wet dream. Do you know what a wet dream is? No. Well, you know, how old are you now? You're, you must be... Counselor shows a calm, accepting approach to this boy who has just had a wet dream. There is no scolding or recrimination. <laughs> the boy is not frightened, and there is no reason for him to feel guilty. Frank, I'm sure you understand now just what happened and uh, that this is probably going to happen quite a few times more, like it does to everybody else, and it's quite normal, right? I think the best thing we can do now is to show you how to clean it up. Okay? Okay. okay. <laughs> I think the kid got frightened when it came like clean up time. <laughs> Let me show you how to clean it up and then start yeah. putting his fucking blanket down, bro. That's fucked up. They cut out the age. You notice that though? They cut out the age. He was like. Yeah, up yeah. There, and then it was like Whoa, because because when they <laughs> when they filmed it, it probably it was probably older than the age they said in it, but they probably said he was like fourteen or something. They had a they had a girl on there, and they're uh, showing her how to put the tampon in and everything. Uh, I didn't see how graphic it went. I just went for the wet dream one. Uh, it had me had me thinking too. I remember like they taught us wet dreams in school, but I never even had a wet dream until I was like twenty six or twenty seven because. I was going through opioid withdrawal and I was Man. too much of a burnout and a loser to jerk off. So I just had to come out somehow. Man, bro, if I don't beat off for more <laughs> than three days, I still will have a wet dream to this day. Yeah. Maybe I never four, had it as a kid though. Maybe four. Maybe, bro, bro, I remember, I remember, and this, this is partly because I started beating off a little late actually. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I, yeah. like I would masturbate a little bit, but I wouldn't like finish. You know what I mean? So like, I would always be backed up and shit. Mm. But I remember fucking, I remember, I remember literally, bro, there was times where like I had, especially if my, like, <laughs> especially <laughs> like if one of my boys had like a cute sister or a stepmom or this and that, bro, I would literally sleep with like a piece of paper towel over my shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? so just in case I had a wet dream, it would, just, un it would just unload <laughs> into the paper <laughs> towel. It's like just gish, gish, gish. And I just wake it's, up. It's so powerful, eh? Bro, it's like it's like no load in real life. You know what I mean? It's like no no regular yeah, life. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's like the baddest. No, like, no contact, nothing. Yeah. Oh, it's so fucking crazy, bro. How mm -hmm. it, it tells you how powerful the mind can actually be. Yeah, it's you know? disappointing because you'll wake up when you're coming and I always try to grab it and I'm like yeah, yeah, hoping yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, catch yeah. it in time, but you never get it in time. Well, because a big problem too is like, even though it's like, it feels like a huge nut and this, this, that, a lot of the time you could also feel like there's something left still. Like, even though it's huge, it, it always feels like, like, there's, there's like a lot of the times I still have to like beat the little 12% that didn't come out. You, you, I you think know I, I mean? might have. I think I might have even had a double wet dream one time. Like I went a few weeks without jerking off for whatever yeah. reason. Cause I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm married. So married people don't have sex with yeah. each other at least. I'm not but... married, but I've been with my girl 10 years and we have two kids under 10. So yeah. 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 We've been together nine years too. We met in rehab actually. Like it was a rehab romance and nice. Nice. those don't usually end well, but it worked out good for us. And you're yeah. both still clean to this day. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. I I fuck with I fuck with weed a bit, but uh, ah, that's bro, it. That's a fucking joke. Yeah. As long as you're not a mess, certain yeah. people can't do anything. They get a little high and they're just like, woo. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? but, outside of weed, I know uh, anything outside of weed is too tempting. If I start drinking, for sure, I'm gonna want to do blow or do whatever. Yeah. And so double yeah. double wet dream. Go ahead, finish finish. Yeah, yeah. So I think. <laughs> so I also I had a wet dream in jail one time when I was doing weekends. So I was lucky, like my cell was empty. Yeah. But then I'm thinking, like, I'm like, I got to hand the guard my boxers and my suit after, like, hopefully yeah. he doesn't see it. And I can yeah. still remember the dream. It was, uh, I was yeah. on the top of this boat. Like, it was a, a, like a trolling fishing boat, I guess, with a canopy. Yeah. And I was on top of the canopy getting a hand job from some hot black chick. And, yeah. and then that was it. But yeah. then I had another wet dream 
at uh, at a at a buddy's house, and there was like four of us there, and I had been on a binge, so I just went and slept on the floor and passed out. Yeah. But then I woke up, like woke up, coming, grabbed myself, and then one of my buddies after he's like, "Dude, did you just did you have a wet dream?" <laughs> And I'm like, no, no, what do you mean? What do you mean? And it's so embarrassing because I was like 25 and this was like a younger group of kids that were like 21 or something. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. holy fuck, so embarrassing. Yeah, 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 you were like the cool one, supposedly. Yeah, and then you was, supposedly is right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know I mean? And then you busted out <laughs> fucking public wet dreams. Yeah. Like, uh, fucking... <laughs> so embarrassing. Public, public, <laughs> public wet dreaming instead of public masturbation and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, Nocturnal man. emissions. Yeah. Bro, I'm telling you, bro, it's fucking, you know, I, bro, I know people who've never had one ever, never their entire life. Do you never think, do you think they're just not admitting to it? They just don't want to admit it or some people legitimately don't. I, I think bro, it's like anything else, man. People got to understand that shit. You know, like everybody's fucking like body chemistry and mental makeup and all that shit, bro. You know, it just all fucking differs, you know? Yeah. You know, yeah. I do think some are lying though, for sure. You know what I mean? They're like, you know, if the 200 people tell you they're in it, there's a, definitely a handful that are bullshitting. You know yeah, I mean? there's a lot of people that are to the ego won't let them admit to a lot yeah, of the embarrassing yeah. shit, right? Who gives a fuck, bro? That means you got a dope ass imagination. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, bro, that that, that 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 wet dream pussy feels better than any real pussy. It's crazy. You know what I mean, bro? Like, yeah, bro, bro, it's bro, next level. Bro, you you had a girl made you bust from a hand job in a wet dream, like that. Shit, <laughs> yeah. That never happens in real life, damn near. You know it's what like, I mean? Uh, that's why people practice that tantric sex where they try to do the no touch orgasm. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're trying to replicate the wet dream, the yeah. that that explosive fucking nut. Yeah. Yeah, I know people who who said they were able to make that shit happen. Yeah, I think I've tried some a couple times. I, like I, I was so, so worked up, like being so worked up, and then I'm like, yeah. oh, let's just let's see if it feels different or fucking yeah. whatever. Nah, that shit. Dude, I've stuck my dick in a cup of snow before just to see if it was good, what it's gonna <laughs> feel like. Yeah, like true. getting ready right before I come and then stick it in the cup of snow yeah, and fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty exhilarating. Yeah. I bet, bro. I bet that should you better be ready to <laughs> you better be ready to nut though, because if you're not perfectly ready, that's gonna give you the worst case of blue balls ever. Yeah, that you gotta need to disappear. The timing is you gotta be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's gotta be like right at the cusp. All right, listen. Great, great chopping it up with you. It's eleven thirteen. They just started yeah. uh th these two just started uh full online virtual school today. Oh yeah, you were saying that. How'd it go? It went all right. I had a couple moments where fucking me and my son were both fucking losing it, screaming. You know what I mean? Like he, see, he he freaks out. He's got like, like he's good more often than my daughter. She he's eight, she's nine. My daughter's really sweet, but she's already like becoming a woman, like with her attitude and yeah, in other ways which weren't expected yet. And, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so her hormones are already fucking flippy floppy. And she's got a bad attitude a lot of the time, mm -hmm. but you can reason with her at almost any time. Yeah. When my son goes, bro, like it's like psychopath shit. You know what I mean? It's, it's crying, screaming, anger, all that. And I remember I was like one of them kids too. You yeah, know me mean? too. Yeah. But, um, but, but, and I, as a man got to continue to get better. Cause like when, when any human gets like that, it's very hard for me not to get like that at some point. Like if I try to talk to you, and then the talking's not working. Eventually, I, I either gotta leave, or it's gonna be two people being like that. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I'm yeah. And then we're both like, ah, what the fuck? Why don't you understand this shit? It's so easy. And he's like, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, yeah. so we had a couple. We had, but but what's dope about it? Now that I understand it a little better, is the way it's laid out is pretty slick, right? They give you like every lesson that you're going to do for the next few months. Mm -hmm. So now that I'm looking at it, I can actually get them ahead of the game. You know what I'm saying? Like I can, I can, I can make them do mad math for a day or two and then they can have two days where they don't yeah, have yeah. Fucking math. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And then they're not doing the thing that's stressing them out. It'd be cooler, calmer. So I think it'll be good. You know, they, they did the virtual schooling last year, but that was like literally through the school and mm -hmm no local school ever does virtual learning. So it was a fucking, it was a train wreck. You know what I mean? Like it was just a fucking, you know, they didn't fall behind because I was home with them. Thank God. Yeah. But I don't know, man, we'll see, man. I just, I just hope I'm praying. I'm praying uh, enough people go get vaxxed up <laughs> to make this herd immunity shit happen or, or yeah. they come up with, you know, cause I know I'm not, 
going to get it anytime soon, at least. You know, I don't know where you stand on that shit. I don't have it yet. My wife has it, but um, same, same here. I'm just, I don't feel, I'm kind of almost waiting until I'm forced to do it. And that's the only, or unless there's some big outbreak in the area and then I'm more inclined to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm not, yeah, exactly. Like I'm not like, like never, no way. I'm not like one of those dudes. Yeah. But I'm also like, yeah, you know, I don't mind staying in the house more. You know what I mean? Like I'll just, yeah. Stay in the house <laughs> while, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you're less at risk at me because at least you look slimmer. You know, I got to lose some weight. And I don't, you know, like because COVID has a little more of a chance of sticking to me. You know I mean? <laughs> that shit'll find my glucose levels and stick in. <laughs> so we'll, uh, I got more to talk about on COVID and like Johnson and Johnson and the vaccines and stuff too, but we'll save that for another time. Hopefully That's I'll have right. you on again. Um, we've gone right. twice as long as I thought we were going to go and uh, I had a great time. Glad you yeah. came on. I'm just yeah. going to run this little clip that says uh, like your Instagram and yeah, that, that, so follow- that's, that's my YouTube right there. That's my personal, more music, social commentary, fight sports, Instagram. That's my TikTok. As far as straight up comedy, you want to escape the polarization, escape the nonsense. Follow me on at whitest guy on, on Instagram. That's what you see on the bottom there. That's like that page is only comedy. None of All my right. real opinions. You know what I mean? Just shit. Talk yeah. And fuckery. You know what I mean? Okay. Sounds good, bud. All right, brother. All right, dude. Thanks for taking the time. Hopefully we'll do it again soon. Much love, bro. All right, bud. Have a good night. Peace. Later.